Good afternoon, everybody, and apologies for the late start for this uh, meeting this afternoon. Welcome to the Public Services Select Committee. Uh, we'd like to elect a chairman for today's meeting. Please, can I take nominations for a chair? Yes, could I nominate Councillor Tudor Thomas, please? OK, thank you. Could I have a seconder, please? Uh, yes, Chair, I'll second that. Thank you very much, Councillor Trahan. OK, thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Tudor Thomas, would you like to take over the meeting, beginning with apologies for absence? Thank you. You're on mute, Tudor. You're on mute, Tudor. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. Tudor Thomas here, Councillor for Priory in, in Abergavenny. Uh, and I'll obviously chair the meeting now. I'd like to go to um, apologies for absence. And I've got apologies from Councillor Lisa Dimmock, who's put forward a substitute, Anne Webb, who's, who's present. And then Councillors Paul P Pavia, Malcolm Lane, Penny Jones, Jane Pratt, Tony Eason. I've not had any other uh, apologies. Um, as far as I'm, if you look to item three, any declarations of interest, please? No, none. We go to item four, um, the public open forum. I've not been informed of any uh, member of the public wanting to address the meeting today. So we'll go straight now then to um, agenda item five, which is regional working corporate joint committee consultation. Uh, and I believe now that um, Matt uh, Gatehouse is going to take us through this presentation. So I'll hand over to Matt. Thank you very much, Chair. I'll, I'll just put the, the presentation uh, up on the screen shortly for, for members to see. Uh, for anyone watching on the, the live stream, the presentation is available uh, with the agenda papers on the Council's website. Uh, and councillors this afternoon will we'll hear from the Chief Exec, uh, Paul Matthews, uh, Francis O'Brien and myself. So just bear with me a moment and I'll, I'll pop the, the presentation up so you can you can see this. Members will, will also be aware a report has come around with the, the presentation uh, this afternoon, which, which gives a, a little bit more detail and we'll sort of flesh some of that out with the, the presentation that will appear on your on your screen shortly. Okay, so um, Chair, with, with your permission, I'll, I'll hand over to the, the Chief Exec who will kick us off this afternoon. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr Gatehouse. Thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. The, the very best news for you is that you're going to hear not too much from me, um, but perhaps more from, from Francis and from Matt. Um, but certainly I'll, I'll stay around for, for your whole meeting for, for whatever questions that you might want to put. I know Francis has to be away by about quarter to three. So, so good afternoon all. Uh, an interesting time, I guess, to have this conversation, given that the Senate actually voted through the local government and elections bill yesterday. So the, the wider piece of legislation within which the, the concept of corporate joint committee sits has now exited its final stage of approval within Wales government and now wait, awaits uh, Royal assent, uh, assent, which will be granted, I'm sure, in the early part of next year. Uh, so I thought what I would do very, very briefly is to, I guess, rerun you through some of the background to, for, for your consideration this afternoon. Uh, corporate joint committees as, um, as a discussion topic has I guess being quite popular in, in, in the, the, the media and in some circles over the course of the last few weeks. But it exists, as I say, as part of a, of a wider piece of legislation, quite, quite a fundamental piece of legislation, actually, um, which is, is dealing with a range of issues um, which run all the way through from, from reforming the, the actual franchise for, for local government elections. So, so 16 and 17 year olds um, now have a vote when when, when you put yourselves forward to the public again in, in, in 2022. Um, 
It enables councils to give consideration to a first past the post mechanism for, for returning a council. It enables your electoral cycle to be reset at five years rather than four years. It looks at some pretty fundamental changes to the way that the democratic governance and leadership of councils is actually enacted. Also the performance of governance regimes um, and a range of other sort of provisions which include provisions around voluntary sort of mergers if, if councils should be minded to to think about that in, in the future. Why, why do I bore you with that over the course of a couple of minutes? I guess I'm just stressing to you that whilst th this afternoon you were considering corporate joint committees, um, they are set within probably five years uh, of, of development of, of, of this current piece of legislation, um, which does actually have a genesis back in 2015. But, but for those of you that have been around even longer, you'll be able to track some of the sentiment all the way back to a fundamental piece of work that Sir Jeremy Beecham did, um, which is probably closer to, to a decade ago now. Um, you'll, you'll be talking this afternoon about you know, governance, you'll be talking about finance, you'll be talking about staffing, you'll be talking about functions, um, all really, really important, but no more important, I think, than remembering the context within which your, your, your conversation sits. Matt, can you flick the slide, please? I presume you're driving this slide, this slide deck. Um, I'm going to take 30 seconds on this. Um, there are a range of other interesting policy ideas that, that are running um, within Wales, the UK and Europe at the moment. Um, you'll be fully familiar with, with, with everything around Brexit. You'll know that we're within 50 days of the end of our transition period. You'll know that there is some interesting conversations afoot between the, the, the nations of the, of the UK in terms of how shared prosperity funding is, is going to work, the, the, succeed, the, the succeeding funding stream to uh, convergence funding that, that parts of Wales have been accustomed to for over 10, 15 years. And you'll also be aware that as a council, we're a, a, a significant player within the card of your, your debate this afternoon touches on all of those fears and, and that hierarchy of government and governance. The degree to which you want to go into it uh, will, will be a matter for you, but should you want to explore it during your conversation, I'll be here to help you guide uh, help guide you through that. Uh, switch, switch again, Matt, if that's okay. And my final slide for you um, today before I hand over to Francis is to just really start to set the overview for you in terms of uh, corporate joint committees. Um, you'll see there very, very clearly that primarily they're being established to bring uh, a different sense of order and being to three core functions um, that, that we as a council are currently, or we, we have significant powers within and we will continue to have significant powers within. Uh, and as you'll see there, they're about strategic development planning that's the idea of elevating a local development plan, as you've known it um, uh, in, in previous years, to a strategic development plan covering the whole of South East Wales. That's still, there, there still will be a local development plan for Monmouthshire, but it, this introduces a new hierarchy of planning. I think we, we've had several conversations over the years about um, how effective individual councils can be in bringing forward regional transport solutions. Corporate joint committees are seen to be vehicles that can actually bring a, a greater geographical mass to, to, to that consideration. And likewise, how much penetration and influence can individual councils genuinely have on economies which tend to be minimally sub-regional, usually regional, if not national. So again, that, that, that sphere of policy is being guided into this corporate joint committee arena. There is a fourth, which is around school improvement. But I have to say that that seems to be, if, if not falling away, it doesn't currently have the same priority with, with, with policymakers as to those three listed there. The proposition is that Wales will see four corporate joint committees. There will not be 40, there will not be 400, there will be four. Francis and Matt will talk about that in more depth as we go through. We would be part of a, um, a corporate joint committee for South East Wales, which is coterminous with the 10 civic areas, the 10 councils, 
that make up the Cardiff Capital Region City deal. So in terms of numbers, it's four. In terms of areas of work, it's, it's, it's those three plus school improvement to, 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 to a slightly lesser extent. I'm not going to major in terms of the roles of council leaders, delegated powers, or indeed one member, one vote, because I think Matt, you'll probably touch on those when you when, when you talk to them later in the presentation. So by way of setting the scene, Chair, if it's OK, I'll stop there and I'll hand over to Francis to continue the slide deck. All right, thanks, Paul. Afternoon, everyone. I just want to check um, you can hear me because I'm having a few technical issues. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so, in terms of impact of the CJCs, as um, Paul has just set out there uh, briefly, there will be implications on three sort of key areas that sit within um, the enterprise portfolio. One being um, planning and the strategic development plan. Now you'll be fam very familiar that local authorities are already uh, required to produce a light touch LDP for the area, and that's a process that we are actively engaged in at the moment. Um, but there will be a requirement for within the CJC for the development of the strategic plan. Um, if you remember a couple of years ago now, I think it was the end of uh, 2018. Monmouthshire Council agreed in principle to the uh, signing up of developing a strategic development plan. So there isn't anything different there or anything uh, new that's being proposed. And the other thing is that um, planning applications will still be determined locally. That won't uh, change in terms of any changes. And the scope and form of the uh, strategic development plan still continues to be set out within the Planning Act. But the CJC governing body will be the um, governing body that will oversee the strategic planning panel. So that's the, the slight shift there from the conversations we would have had a little while back when uh, the authority signed up to develop in an SDP. Then on the regional uh, transport aspect, one of the key things there um, that you'll be familiar with over uh, time is obviously we used to have Suta <coughs> a number of years ago um, and there hasn't really been the ability uh, and body there for the, the some of those functions and functionalities to operate. So within the CJC structure um, there would be the regional transport planning um, functions and that would look very much at the better transport integration and uh, things like the Wales Transport Transport strategy consultation at the moment. So there would be clear uh, governance structures between Welsh Government, Transport for Wales, the CJC structure overseeing regional transport plan and local authorities would still have their functionalities around um, transport. So this hopefully will be very much an improvement and uh, allows the ability really for the current Cardiff Capital Region Regional Transport Authority to be able to undertake additional uh, functions and duties that at the moment it's unable to do. Then the latter part then is the economic wellbeing function incorporating the city uh, and city deal and growths. It'll enable um, things to happen to, to be able to have us to think locally and see the world in a different uh, function, but yet being able to best act in the interest of the region. The only functions that will move into that will be the ones that are sitting within the collaborative arrangements. So where it makes sense to do so at scale, so where it makes sense at a regional level for functions that from an economic perspective need to sit in a regional aspect, they will sit there. And I think that will strengthen the activity that we currently undertake because we do recognise that there is um, limitations that we can undertake at a local level and at a local authority level and being able to act um, as a region and with scale and mass will actually be beneficial for the region as a whole. So I'm going to pass over now to, to Matt and he's going to go through the rest of the slides but happy to take any questions afterwards. Cheers Matt.
You're on mute, Matt, sorry. You there now, Matt. Right, apologies, uh, apologies, Chair. I'll uh, I'll just return to, to sharing the presentation. A couple of issues at, uh, at my end. OK, thanks. Right, uh, can I check, Chair, Chair that everyone can, uh, can see that presentation again? Yes, yes it's up on screen. OK, that's great. Yep. Thanks. Um, yeah, just to sort of start, so just to, to remind you, we're in the midst of a, of a consultation on, at the moment, and that consultation is about the, the regulations. You know, it, it's not about whether or not we will have CJC. So one of the things we're, we're looking to do off the back of, of today's presentation is to, to draft that consultation response on behalf of, of Monmouthshire County Council will, that will then be put before, before Council. Uh, and subject to agreement by by council that will go forward as our as our submission to the the consultation so what i'm going to do is just sort of run through some of the the principles the, the governance aspects and, and so on and what you'll see at the, the the foot of each of the the slides is is just a sort of question so if you can just sort of bear those in in mind when we, we move on to sort of questions and discussions later on because the, the sorts of questions and responses we get today will help officers to to draft that that consultation response. We, we haven't begun that yet. We wanted select committee and, and members to have the opportunity to, to view this and and help shape it. So probably one of the things it, it, it's important to say at the outset and, and the way in which this is, is drafted within the regulations is the corporate joint committees, you know, as, as Paul has mentioned, are, are seen as a, as a sort of creature of, of local government. Yes, they are prescribed by Welsh government. They're, uh, they're set out in, in law but they are to be seen as, as part of the, the local government family. Uh, and, and what that means effectively is they'll be subject to the same powers and have the same duties as, as principal as principal councils, as ourselves. They, they will have a constitution. They will be expected to have standing, standing orders. Now, within these regulations, how they actually operate is largely, there's, there's a huge amount of flexibility for members of the CJC itself to to determine. So that gives us quite a bit of sort of variation to meet meet the different needs and, and ambitions and of the of the different regions. So you may end up with CJCs in different areas evolving slightly, slightly differently. Uh, again, as, as Paul and as, as mentioned and Francis has elaborated on, the CJC is, is starting with, with sort of three service areas within it. Uh, there, there are two routes in which functions can be can be added to a, a CJC. Uh, it can happen uh, by by order of Welsh ministers, which in effect is is what these initial three functions have come about from, or at the request of of two or more councils. So, if the South East Wales Corporate Joint Committee in in future wanted to bring additional functions in, it could do, but that would be in the the gift of the the CJC itself. Um, so, so just to sort of set out um, and, and just to give you an, an idea, we've probably got sort of four, four or five slides I'll, I'll talk through. So just to give you an idea of, uh, of, of sort of how much information you will have have put before you. Um, so this, this, the CJC is run by a, a committee, effectively the, the 10 leaders of the, the local authority, and that assumes the responsibility for, for delivering the, the functions. Now, one of the, the important things there is that the members of the, the CJCs have powers delegated to them. Decisions of the CJC don't need to be ratified by, by principal councils. They do report back and they are um, subject or do need to respond to questions subject to, to scrutiny. But, but you know, the, the representatives of the 10 authorities making up that CJC uh, have, delegated, have delegated powers. Um, it is on the, the basis of a, of a one member, one vote. It's not, uh, the votes are not distributed on land mass, they're not distributed on, on area. Uh, you know, our CJC, South East Wales, will, will effectively, you know, it's, it's the Cardiff Capital Region footprint. Monmouthshire County Council gets the same number of votes uh, as Cardiff or as, as Newport, as the other members on, on that, that committee. 
Uh, one of the, the important things to, to say, although you know, many of the, um, the, the, the regulations and the way in which these are, are governed are similar to, to councils, the quorum will be higher. You, you, you'll all be aware, members, that, that our quorum is 25% is attendance at a, at a meeting. Uh, in the instance of the, the CJC, the regulations stipulate that the quorum should be should be 70%. That obviously gives safeguards that decisions could be made uh, you know, effectively with a, with a relatively small number of, of members in in attendance and, and they're sort of therefore taken without the views of, of the majority of members there. So there's an expectation um, that that um, that 70 percent of members in attendance before uh, before a decision can be can be made. Um, so again, we, we have the opportunity, Chair, with, with your permission to, to come back to some of these discussion discussion topics. But but you know, just to stress there, one of the, the consultation questions is, you know, do we agree with those those issues um, as they're set out on that on that slide? Um, now. The starting point for the CJC is the is the 10 leaders of the, the local authorities, but they are able to bring additional representatives into the, the CJC in the form of of co-opted members. Now, the one caveat around that, and it's up to the CJC to determine whether those co-opted members have voting rights. Uh, however, the number of co-opted members with voting right cannot exceed uh, the number of local authority or council representatives on that committee. So South East Wales, it'll be made up of, of, of 10 representatives. We couldn't see more than the nine co-opted members with a, with a vote on, on that committee. Uh, this is the CJC is able to, to create subcommittees to, to discharge functions. So, you know, some of the things Francis has, has touched upon, you know, we, we could see, uh, it's quite likely we we'll see, for example, a, a transport subcommittee or a strategic development plan subcommittee, uh, and that could be made up of, of uh, the members on the CJC or the flexibility to, to co-opt additional members. And those additional members could, could come from the, the ranks of the local authorities. They, they could be cabinet members, they could be, they could be other members, or they could be people from, from outside local, local authorities. Um, we will see national park members for the strategic development plan function so they will be members of the CJC, but will only uh, be able to, to vote on, on SDP functions. Um, as, as I touched upon, there'll be a, a code of conduct and, and standing orders, and, and these are, are to be established. The, the regulations require CJCs to, to put in place scrutiny, scrutiny arrangements. Um, and and, and you know, very importantly, and, and when we're thinking about, about timescales on this, uh, the bill, was, as I think Paul has mentioned, will receive royal assent in, in the new year. It is expected that the, the CJC will hold its first meeting by September 2021. But there is a degree of flexibility in terms of, of the transition arrangements. That doesn't mean that all functions need to, to move over uh, immediately. Um, just to, to touch on a, a, a few more issues. Um, Staffing and, and workforce, it's expected that, that staff will be on, on similar terms and conditions to, to, to local authorities. You know, that is to, to prevent uh, either the erosion uh, of, of salaries within the sector or equally the, the inflation of, of those salaries. So we expect to see similar remuneration uh, at CJCs as we do at local, local authorities. Now, the, the, the regulations set out a number of statutory executive officers which are expected to, um, to, to be appointed. Um, that's a, a chief exec, a chief finance officer or, or section 151 officer, uh, a, a monitoring officer and a, and a, chief, a chief governance officer, which, which the regs sort of define as, as quite similar to the, the, the statutory head of democracy role in a, in a local authority. Again, these are, these are consultation questions. Do, do we feel that the CJC should appoint all of those executive officers? And we have to bear in mind that, you know, in terms of, of the arrangements in South East Wales, we are ahead of the game with, with what we have already in place with the, the Cardiff Capital Region uh, City deal and the, the, the team in which uh, Kelly Byrne has in place there. So I, I think you know, if, you, if you sort of think of, of the equivalent uh, of this, 
um, you know, we already have uh, a, a senior a sort of chief exec or, or managing director of, um, in charge of the, the Cardiff Capital Region City deal. Uh, and effectively, the, the, the CJC would, would sort of um, form part of then or, or, the, or the Cardiff Capital Region will, will adopt the, the ways of working and become the corporate joint, joint committee. Um, on, on to sort of some of the, the, the finances. The, the, the regulations don't provide uh, any formula basis for the, the funding of CJCs. Basically, the CJC will set its own budget and the expectation is that that budget requirement is, is met by the, by the 10 local authorities. So the, the CJC uh, puts in its sort of budget requirements at the end of, of November each year, and that will be dealt with by the local authority in terms of, of, of budget consultation and, uh, and our usual, usual processes. Um, CJC again will, will be subject to sort of regular um, audit audit procedures, uh, and probably it's, it's worth sort of mentioning in terms of the the finances. So effective that budget being set by by the CJC, the the ten local authority representatives. You know again just to stress that point, it is one member, one vote. So so it will require a, a majority of the, the the ten members to 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 set to set the budgets. Uh, probably also worth worth mentioning and really important uh, given where, where we're at with some of the things playing out out nationally. CJCs are expected to, to play a sort of major role in in how EU successor funds are are used uh, and that'll be in the context of, of something which is a separate consultation uh, I, I believe at the moment in terms of, of regional in investment frameworks. So, and, and I think those of you that have been sort of following the, the news this morning will see some of this having been sort of played out in, in BBC Wales uh, th this morning. It, it's very much sort of the expectation that councils will play a, 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 major, a major role in the, the distribution of the EU successor funds or the, the shared prosperity, prosperity fund. Um, I, I've, I've mentioned, and I, I won't sort of dwell too much on this, that um, the CJC is, is treated as part of the local government family, so it will be bound by the same sort of laws and, and regulations that apply to us. The Equality Act, the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, the Environment Act, uh, Children and, and Wales Family Measure. So putting things into a, a CJC isn't a way to, to, to sort of get around legislation or, or, or move around any of the duties which are placed on, on public bodies. It will still be bound by those those duties. So just to sort of conclude with a couple of um, uh, a couple of points, I, I think if we said at the, the beginning, actually, we, we have a, a deadline to respond to to Welsh Government on the, the draft consultations on the, the regulations by the 4th of um, the 4th of, of, of January. Um, that will be coming forward to, to Council in December uh, for, for hopefully for approval. So I, I guess, Chair, one of the questions I would, would sort of ask is, uh, as you sort of open up for, for discussions and, and questions, for members to bear in mind some of the, the questions that have been posed on the, the, the slide deck, but as well as sort of those questions to, to help your own sort of understanding and our collective understanding of, uh, of what, what it will be like to, to operate with a, with a CJC on a, on a regional footprint and, and the impact on our services. Uh, some of those other other sort of responses be helpful if you cover off some of the things you may expect to see in in uh, the council's response to the um, to the consultation. So, okay. Chief, if, if you're um, you're happy with that, um, yes, offices are still present and we're we're sort of able to um, to sort of open up to to questions and and discussions, but. Chair, with, with your permission, before we do, I just wonder if I could um, possibly check whether there's, there's anything I sort of haven't covered off in, in going through that, which um, Paul right. Francis would like to, to supplement. OK. Any, any, any other officer wish to come in with any supplementary points or, any, or, or anybody else? No, thank you, Chair. Right, OK. So if, if you could take the slides down now, I think, is it? Or do you want to leave the? Yeah, thanks. OK.
Right. Okay. Yeah, I don't seem to have my hand function. I don't know why. No, I, I, I was going to say, I, I can't see hand functions coming up. I think you might, people might have to put it in the chat bar at the moment, just put th yeah. that you want to speak. But you go to Councillor um, Dim um, Dimitri Bartruni now then to start. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair, and thank you to the officers. Um, just so I have this in my little brain, and you know it's very little, so I just want to be corrected. The CJCs can determine their own budgets and tell, tell councils what they want for their own functions. They've determined already their own membership and future membership and the subcommittees that can go under them. They will determine their voting procedure because after we or after this comes through, they can change one member, one vote, as I've read the regs. Um, they can determine their own scrutiny process and set out how that would work. Um, they are legally indemnified, and so if they if they make a decision as ten group leaders and it someone sues them, that the councils have to pick up the tab, or the, the, there's a special that we'll have to fund that. Um, and they have the power to ask for extra powers in the extra areas. Have I got that right? Just those points a minute. I got questions, but have I got that right? I, I think, yeah, to, to pick up on a, a few of those, yes. There's, there's a huge amount of flexibility and a lot of powers vested within the, the CJC itself. But, but just to emphasize this CJC uh, is established with 10 representatives who are locally elected. So it's made up with the 10 uh, local authority leaders. And in terms of, of those decisions, they have to be made by by the CJC. So and, and that's probably or that that is one of the the reasons for the higher quorum, which ensures that decisions can't be made uh, on the basis of a small number of, of attendees and potentially decisions passed by by two or three members. So you know issues such as the the, the matter of, of finances. If you think about it, we've been living with a with the Cardiff Capital Region um, for what two, three, four years now, uh, and, and actually we have put uh, money into the Cardiff Capital Region to to operate, which is similar to how the the CJC will will operate. That that funding would be made available by the by the council to to meet the needs. It would be moved moved across to the the CJC, and the CJC then would would take decisions within that that budgetary framework. Uh, okay, yeah, so, so again, just very briefly, yeah, in, in terms of the, the committees, yes, the, the CJC appoints its own committees, um, you know, invites other members on, um, has to, it has to set up a, a scrutiny committee. And of course, it doesn't take away the fact that the CJC, um, the, the, the leader as, as the representative would be accountable back to, to council and that the, the CJC is accountable and can be, be scrutinised by the individual local authority. So it doesn't take away that, that power. OK, so let's let's start with that democratic point, if I may. So um, I know it's Labour leaders on this, so I don't want any hear any party political nonsense. But the leader of a political party is responsible to their council. And that leader of that political party has a whipping system Right. And realistically, the only people that can hold that leader to account and really cause trouble is within their own group. Right. Labour, Tory, Liberal, Independent, Plied, it doesn't matter. OK, so who in a, in, a, in proper terms, who's going to really raise concerns against their own leader if that leader can then use their powers, their political powers to um, deny them a chair? or use other political powers to ensure that they don't ask awkward questions, because as far as I can see, the structure here uh, basically cuts off any any opposition party in any of the representative councils who are not under any control by the controlling leader. So the power vested in as low as seven people, the quorum is 70 percent, they can determine their own budget, their own me their own membership, their own voting procedure, um, uh, their own decision making without even being accountable to us. Um, and their own scrutiny process. Wow, uh, that that's with public money paid for by the councils. 
And to add to that, they will be in charge, if I heard correctly, that the new shared prosperity fund and divvying out that, divvying that out over the region. So seven, as low as seven people can have that much say over how they function, who scrutinizes them, and where the money goes. And they're public. I, I, I have a lot of problems with that. I'm not going to lie. I have so many problems with that. It's ridiculous. Um, so because we don't have any idea what their budget will be because they can determine it, we have no idea how the scrutiny function will work because they determine it. And we won't know how they determine that. Um, and the leader in theory, any leader in any council of any political party is held responsible. That's not set out how they're held responsible, except that they have to answer questions. Do they have to do an annual report to the council or anything to hold them to account for the big decisions or the big money they're going to make? I think probably on, on, on that sort of last point, one of the, the things they will, will have to do, yes, they will have to do a, an annual report if they're, they're bound by the same responsibility as, as principal council. So if you think this council receives every every October an annual report that reports back on the on the objectives, they'll they'll be subject to the same um, provisions in terms of the, the arrangements for, for performance and, and finances as other councils. Um, you know, in terms of, of what you've described in terms of, of powers, these bodies do carry uh, a lot of delegated powers that are passed to them as a result of of these regulations and and what will follow. So so yes, in terms of 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 the powers that are vested within within CJCs to carry out these uh, these functions, uh, it, it's accurate to say yes, they they carry a lot of powers, uh, and that the the powers that are put into the the, the CJC, you know, the, the 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 leaders, the members of those committees are not required to come back to their councils for on individual decisions they are they are operating under under delegated under delegated powers chair um, chair might, might it be helpful if i make an insertion there yes by all means paul come, come in um, because i think councillor demucci's uh opportunity questions are, are really really good questions um and as officers today, you'll understand that we're not here as proponents or opponents of a piece mm. of legislation that Wales government have, have decided now to put on their statute book. Um, but I, sorry, I missed some of the uh, original commentary from Councillor Petruni, but but I, I guess it was covering off, you know, these things are sovereign bodies. They have the ability to enter into contracts, to employ people, um, to set their own budget, et cetera, et cetera. They mm. need to put in place their own insurance sort of schedules to, 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 to make sure that they're They've got adequate coverage. Should, should, should things go wrong? So, so lot, lots of yeses to those questions. Councillor Petruni's also a uh, fundamental point. There was also right. There, there's a lot. There's a lot of concentration of, of power here in in not too many hands. Mm. And a, any sound um, instrument of democracy also always looks to design in checks and balances, doesn't it? Mm. Um, so, so. I, I think the the epicenter of Councillor Petruni's points are, are good responses to this consultation. You know where, where they come in terms of the various questions we can work out. Um, but ju just as some examples, um, you know the, the leader from Monmouthshire County Council takes with him or her at any point in time the powers that your constitution as a council choose to give him or her. So the the constitutional power that that, that Monmouthshire representative takes into the CJC. You know, there's a conversation to be had there at council level about what the about what the constitution affords. Um, in terms of scrutiny, um, th there is a requirement for, for, for a CJC to have a scrutiny arrangement in place yet to be determined what it is. Now we know, don't we, from um, other things that we're involved with, if I take another example, find another example, um, I'll, I'll find the Education Achievement Service. We chose with the Education Achievement Service, which is a regional body, that we wouldn't go for a, a Greater Gwent um, Scrutiny Committee 
the five sovereign councils decided that they would scrutinize that function themselves. And we continue to do that through our, 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 our CYP committee. So I, I think, Councillor Petruni, so, so some of the ground that you've covered here is yet to be written. Um, and in your consultation response or in the council's cons um, con consultation response, um, I guess we get the opportunity to put some stakes into the ground about things that we actually think are quite important. And I would have thought that that concentration of power, checks and balances will be one of the things that we would centre on. Thank you. Back to you, Matt. I don't, I don't think I've got anything to, to, to add to that. So happy to, to come back in in the event there are sort of further further questions or input requiring um, requiring okay. response. Right. Sure, I, have, I have a few more questions, but happy to concede and wait for other people after they've had their say first. OK, I'll, I'll come back to you, uh, Councillor Petruni. Um, County Councillor Simon Haworth now then, please. Uh, thank you, Chair, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, just a quick couple of questions there, um, Matt, um, and probably one then guided to the Chief Executive. Um, on your opening slide there and on your opening statement, you said actually the Welsh Government have, have, have put this through as legislation. Can I just ask some clarity now of, firstly, we're discussing something here now, now to be honest with you, all we can do is respond to it because seemingly it's going to go forward anyway uh, as, 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 as law. I just need some clarity on, on where we've been before we got to yesterday's decision or, or the decisions being made um, in statute now and, and just, just the process of, of, of exactly how they got to rubber stamp all that and then you're coming to us now to make this to, to, to just ask questions. Because, you know, I mean, it seems like we're another hamster going around in a circle here and we're not going to go anywhere anyway. We can put consultations forward. We can we can lay, as Paul just said, some ground and foundations for uh, delivering some uh, aspects of um, scrutiny or, or other things. Um, but I'm really confused now of, 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 of why we're at this position now um, of consultation when actually it's not going to make a blind bit of difference. All we can do is probably set a, a, a slab out of, 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 of some kind of um, direction that we, we, we'd we like to go. You know, and there's going to be 10 there, um, 10, 10 representatives and 10, 10 leaders and, and 10, 10 people who will make decisions. And going back to con constitutional power, um, does that mean then if we believe that we would like our representative, which will be the leader, to uh, do things in a different way for Monmouthshire, we will we be rewriting some con constitutional forms there within our own constitution? Because I'm sure your slide said that they would have their own constitution. So that takes the power away again from Monmouthshire representatives. So I'm really confused because at the end of the day, I think we're all confused here on the basis of is this is being given to us to look at whether we like it or not, it's going to happen. That's my feeling. And then I, I do believe a lot of the questions Dimitri's asked there, I was going to ask, so that, that's all in hand. And I'm sure you'll want to come back on them if we don't get an answer on them. But we're going to come to December to our meeting and then we'll make a response before January. A response on what really? You know what I mean, and, and what we believe is power being taken away from its local elected representatives and given to uh, another body. That's what it seems like to me, which is fair enough. Uh, we've agreed with the city deal, but we have some control in the city deal. But the player for me in all this is Westminster, because Westminster controls the city deal, because all the money is going to come from Westminster. So going back to the EU aspect of Brexit and things like that, any monies which come from Westminster to do with Brexit or any monies promised, which has been promised from central government, they will they will dictate what comes and if they don't like the way things are, what aspects do we or do these 10 people or these four regions have in the Welsh government's eyes of dictating where we go with all this? It's to me as though we're having another tier. We do away with the city deal, we'll, we'll just create another tier. But 
that tier is going to have a lot more power. And, and to be honest with you, I mean, it, it takes away a lot. And, and the most important thing for me is what they've set out in the criteria there for um, the main objectives. That's what they've stipulated also, but that may not be right for North Wales. It may not be right for, for, for a lot of us. And I do I do see like we're, we're just one of 23 areas here and, and don't forget there's four regions here perhaps all four regions aren't happy with this i, I, I don't know what i don't know how this is all going to play out but my main question to you is is how we've got here and actually a simple explanation of what what difference are we going to make discussing it is it like an hamster going around on a wheel are we going to make any difference bar what paul said we can have an input and in probably setting up a scrutiny committee and as we all know they'll, they'll be scrutinized by other people anyway yeah you know, i mean a lot more powerful than those wlga and, and all the auditors will will want to will want to get in there because you're throwing a lot of money here so you know we 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 will be scrutinizing virtually the the pick up pieces to be honest with you um so i that's that's all i want to say on it thank you okay thank you councillor howard mark do you want to come back or paul do you want to come in should, should i go first matt yes yeah, go for when, when i miss all when i miss all the important pieces you can you you can pick it up <laughs> so, so j just to be absolutely clear um the the local government and elections bill was approved by the senate yesterday okay so as a piece of legislation that that's now en route for ro royal assent, which without a shadow of a doubt will be granted early in the new year. OK. Corporate joint committees are but one chapter in that that piece of emergent legislation. And what you're being invited to do by Wales government is to comment or contribute to the regulations rather than the legislation that will underpin how um, corporate joint committees work. So um, Wales government have committed that those regulations will be co-produced with local government. That's the conversation that you're being invited to. That's the conversation that the, the council is be, being invited to. And those regulations, I think, will probably be laid late January, maybe early February in, in the new year. So you you have as, as Councillor Howard has said you, you know you, you're not impacting the the legislation that's a done deal you've had two goes at the legislation you provided as a council two consultation responses to the legislation I can remember sitting with you for five hours most of you in the council chamber going through um, an early consultation document line by line um, and one of the things actually that we weren't big fans of as Monmouthshire County Council were, were corporate joint committees for all of the reasons that are starting to come out now. Is it an additional layer of hierarchy? You know, does it does it suck powers away? Uh, so as a council, we, we've offered our views as of met, I imagine every other council in Wales, plus a whole host of, of, of other organisations. WG have considered those views and have decided that corporate joint committees are going forward as a part of their legislation, but they are ceding some ground to us to help them devise how they will work. If it's OK, Chair, I'll, I'll leave the, I'll park up the, the Brexit UK government stuff because you might want to deal with that separately so as not to confuse issues. But I'm happy to come back to that at any point in time that you would like me to. OK, thanks. Thank you, Paul. Matt, do you want to come in at all? I think the only thing I would, would add to, to that, um, Chair, just to pick up on uh, Councillor Howard's point, is on the fact that actually it may be slightly different in, in North Wales or, or Mid Wales. So, so these draft regulations will, will set out the fact that CJCs can evolve differently in different areas. So you know, if you think about our starting point with a Cardiff Capital region in, in place, it will be very different to the to the sort of growth deal that's in place in in North Wales and what the members of the, the CJC may wish that, that to evolve in, into may be different in North Wales. So, you know, within the, the, the consultation is required to, to sort of comment on, on some of those sort of flexibilities and, and whether they you know, whether they're the, the right thing as the CJCs move forward. So, yeah, just to be clear, there's still there is still quite a bit to be played for um, and there's still quite a bit that will be at the discretion and, and to be negotiated between individual councils and the 
and the CJC when it's established and, it, and, and when it transitions. OK, thank you, Matt. Um, we go to Councillor Maureen Powell now then, kind of hand up. Uh, thank you, Chairman, and uh, uh, it's been very interesting listening to this. Um, but I do feel that I think I'm going to flip Cochran off, but never mind. Um, I do feel that as councillors, as county councillors, we're dealing a great deal with the public and the everyday things. Um, granted, this is this um, CJC is going to be like the big boss over everything that keeps all the big things going. But one thing I picked up on the small thing affect me. You're talking about a regional transport department and uh, rather than having Sutra. So does that mean that Sutra will no longer exist? Because I have trunk roads that run through my ward and I need to know who I can talk to. It's only a small thing in the big, but this is going to happen throughout. Um, we have all these big alterations with the hierarchy, making the huge, big, important decisions. But it's the smaller decisions down at um, the public level, which we need to know how to, to cope with. So I don't know if anybody can answer me. Oh, did I mishear it that they're going to do away with Sutra? Mm. Matt? Uh, I, I think the thing to say to, to that councillor, councillor Powell, is there will be a, a transition period. And just to stress that, that what the CJC will be taking on is the is the strategic transport function. That doesn't mean it ends up dealing with every single operational detail. The, the powers within these these draft regs give us the ability to to run things concurrently. Now we may decide as a as a local authority, for example. I, I know I'm talking more broadly than than Sutra here, mm, but there are yeah. certain functions that we wish to continue to to operate locally. So that yeah. strategic responsibility will will sit with the the CJC, but there may be certain operational responsibilities that will continue to to sit with with Monmouthshire County Council. Those are conversations yet to be had. But just to be clear, well, the CJC itself will, will be sort of up and up and running and, and required to order its first meeting by by September. That doesn't mean it automatically will assume all of the uh, operational responsibilities. There will be a process of, of negotiation and, and, and transfer of some of those responsibilities o over time. So we're not suddenly sort of flipping a switch on one day and it will all be all be different. There will still be a lot of conversations that, that will sort of play out, I think, in, in, in different select committees and uh, that, that you'll have with officers as to exactly how this shapes up and, and, and some of the practical considerations for our for our operations. OK, thank, thank you. Paul, do you, want to, Paul no, do you want to come in? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Powell, uh, just specifically, I think you can rest assured on Sutra for a couple of years. Um, I, I don't think that's going to be anywhere near the, the, the top of the pops in, in terms of the, 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 the initial working. Uh, just to echo Matt's point, really, we, we have to position ourselves in this way, I believe. Um, when you responded to a consultation on this bill, um, at that point in time, um, the, the way that the draft legislation was written was that the minister would be able to establish CJCs for whatever he or she wanted, whenever he or she wanted. Um, and initially in the draft legislation from, from memory, there were six areas. Um, now there are really three. Um, it's good improvements out there, but it's not, as I said, I've said two or three mm. times, it's just not got the same political traction at the moment. So now there are three. Um, and the, the, the only people that can determine unless there's a you know, cataclysmic service failure of some sort, you know, ministers always have reserve powers. Um, mm. But the only people that can determine whether there would be other areas added would be councils themselves. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not leading you in one way, shape or form in terms of whether I believe in CJCs or not. Um, but as of yesterday, I know they're coming. Um, I, I've, I've offered you a view that their, their, their focus and it has been somewhat narrowed. The ability for them to grow amorphously has been somewhat narrowed. And in terms of their, their intention, uh, uh, if, if I may, Chair, I'll just quickly run through it mm -hmm. again just to, to amplify for, for all members. They are charged with overseeing the development of a strategic development plan, a land use plan for, mm -hmm. for South East Wales. Mm -hmm. They are not charged with taking forward the development of Monmouthshire's local development plan. So, you know, they will not be entering the sort of territory that, that um, members of the planning committee enter into on, on a daily and a weekly basis. They will not be going there. 
um, but they will be setting up, they will be charged with taking forward a more strategic um, perspective on, on South East Wales. In terms of transport, they're charged with developing a strategic transportation plan. We already, we already have through uh, the Cardiff Capital Region, um, uh, uh, an RTA, a, 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 a traffic a transport authority, which Councillor Jane Pratt represents us on. Um, so really, um, it's moving forward a piece of work that we've had flowing for, for, for a couple of years here anyway. So I, I don't see that as a as a major impediment. The, 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 the bit that, that's probably most nebulous is um, th this economic sort of well-being part. You know, mm. it's for, for something on the on the face of legislation. For me, that's still a little bit too nebulous and that needs to, to be worked through. But I guess, Councillor Powell, the assurance I'm looking to give you is this isn't um, this isn't th this new phenomena it isn't at liberty to rape and pillage the the, the roles and, and responsibilities of councils to their heart's content. Um, that, that they have three folk high, a fourth if you encounter school improvement. They mm -hmm. cannot drift off those unless actually councils want them to. Um, and it is possible, for example, that, and I'm just using, you know, the most local example I can think of, it might be that at some point in the future, um, Monmouthshire County Council and Newport um, City Council want to establish a CJC, just the two of them, to take forward Activity X. Hmm. Those councils, those two councils would have the ability to approach the minister whoever that might be at this point in time and say, we would like to establish another CJC on our terms to achieve this. In that regard, a CJC becomes just another, uh, like a joint committee or a joint venture or a company limited by guarantee. It becomes another vehicle that in the future, a council or a combination of councils may choose to use. But in terms of what we're dealing with at the minute, narrow focus, no ability to roam, um, not tremendous, shouldn't be tremendously interested in, in, I think, the things that you become involved with as ward councillors in your representative roles. Um, they should be looking to elevate themselves. And as I say, it wouldn't really start until 2022 anyway. So, so it's we, we've got a little bit of time to work out the how. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much for that. And I'm pleased to hear what you said about the planning, because that was the other thing I was a bit concerned about, that we would lose the powers that we have over our own planning. Thank you very much to everyone. Okay, thank, thank, thank you, Councillor Powell. We go now then to Councillor Richard Roden. Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, good afternoon all. I have to say that I agree with uh, a number of the uh, comments made by uh, fellow councillors. It appears it's too late to complain about the introduction of CFCs. We have to live with that. So moving forward to more scrutiny type points, um, how will the C uh, F, uh, CJCs be funded? Uh, what are the views regarding the distribution of the Shared Prosperity Fund? And how do you think the public will respond to the funding aspects? Secondly, uh, how will this extra tier of government be presented to the public during the current financial uh, issues and health issues that we have with COVID-19? And how do you think they'll respond? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor. Go to Matt Gatehouse. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair. And, and yeah, thanks for the, for the question. Again, I, th I think those are all really, really interesting and, and, and sort of valid points and, and certainly things that need to be considered within the the consultation response. Um, you know, in terms of, to, to touch upon one of those, the, the distribution of, of EU funds, those discussions are, are very much in, in their infancy. They're not of themselves part of the, the, the CJC regs. This is um, discussions that are playing out alongside the, the, the corporate joint committees, not enshrined within them. But we surface them here as, as probably something that we see as, as a likely outcome if we think of the CJC taking responsibility for, for sort of local, local growth and economic development on a, on a regional basis. It's very likely that it will play a strong part in, in how those um, sort of EU prosperity funds are, are managed. And, and that's still to play out between, between Welsh government and, and, and UK government. 
you know, you, you could foresee a, a situation where where you know, actually CJCs give give much more sort of leverage um, to the the local government family because uh, you know as has been sort of pointed out already the the city and growth deals are, are very much a creature of, of Westminster rather than the Welsh government. So so thinking back to to I think it was the the second or third slide that that Paul put up there. It's not always about trend, um, sort of hierarchy. It's that interplay between the different the different agencies. So, so it could be, it could be, and I, I'm only speculating here that, that actually these give a sort of greater opportunity to to sort of access and, and leverage some of those those EU EU structural funds. Um, you know, on, on the issues of, of how these matters play out um, with the the public and and how this is to be to be messaged again. Just, just to stress, the the CJCs are a, a matter and are being sort of legislated and, and created by by Welsh government. Um, you know, as, as been mentioned here, you know, as, as councillors in in response to previous consultations and, and previous discussions, there there have been some concerns raised uh, about them. So that the messaging of that is very much this is a policy of Welsh government. Um, the budget set, you know, not dissimilar to to other regional arrangement, the EAS or, or be it the city deal as currently are, the, the CJC will will come to this council with it with its sort of budget requirements. You know, that still has to be funded by, by this council, but in the same way we currently fund the city deal and we currently fund the, the educational achievement service. So, you know, as a council, yes, we have put powers with, with other sort of regional bodies and then they are given the the, the authority to, to to spend that money, um, but but yeah, ultimately the 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 budgets um, certainly the the budgets at point of of inception will will come through local authority funding. But what we may say, if we think about the the position of these within the city and, and growth deals and what those aspire to do, is to actually leverage in far greater funding to our to our area. Um, the, than we currently the, than we currently have. You know, the, the rationale is that by operating at scale, these things should give us greater economic clout and the ability to attract more funding and investment into the into the region. Um, you know, obviously, as an officer here today, you know, my point is is not to say whether that's right or right or wrong, or, or whether the the policy of Welsh government is is right or wrong. At the moment, we're here to sort of set out that. This is the the consultation we've been asked to to respond to, and and I think really really helpfully sort of members are, are engaging with this and and giving us as of, as officers the the, the your sort of a, a line into your thoughts so we can begin to to draft that response back to Welsh government. Okay, thank you, Matt. That's grand. Thank you. Too happy. Before I open it out now to um, other members of the council, is there anybody on the PSB who wants to make a point or come back on a point before we, I open it out to other councillors? I see I've got other councillors with hands up. Um, I'll go to um, Jamie Trahan now because although you're down the list, you, you are actually on the PSB and I, I, I want to hear your views first. So councillor Jamie Trahan. Thank you, Chair. I, um, I do apologise for putting my hands up late. Um, I. I work slightly differently to most no, other councils, so please forgive me. Um, <clears throat> right, OK, um, I've just got a, a very simple, basic question, really. Uh, the the Capital City deal um, with its regional transport plan or strategy or whatever has entirely neglected my area, uh, Monmouth, in its outreach, if you like, in um, improving or instilling a public transport service. What guarantees are there that the CJC will correct this oversight? Um, and as we're funding this, will we be getting extra funds from the Welsh Government to help? I know initially they were to set up first meetings, but overall, um, I think that's it for the moment, Chair. OK, I'll thanks. Back later Thank you. Thank you. Right, that's Councillor Trahan. Mark, do you want to come in on this? Yeah, yeah, thanks. And again, thanks for the for the question. I, I think sort of sitting here as, as, as an officer, um, I, I don't think we can give assurances that the CJC will 
result in in funds or, or priorities changing in in any local in any local local area. Uh, I think probably the the, the one thing it, it sort of, we sort of would be seeking to to see happen through retaining those sort of local local links back to the authority and and what the CJC would probably aspire to to do is to create that link from from local and, and local accountability through to council through to the to regional to be able to sort of capitalize on on some of those sort of opportunities and and visions that exist on the the, the national and, and and international stage so you know as we touched upon ideally the the theory would be that, that it's able by acting at scale to leverage in more funding to to operate with a, a sort of greater economies of, of scale and deliver solutions that, that, are, that are better than are those that are delivered by the the sum of its parts but but you know again what i would say yeah, that is generally the theory when, when you move to, to regionalization on certain things i don't think this council would be happy putting everything you know there are services which i don't imagine members would be happy putting into to regional arrangements but there are certain responsibilities that, that i think is sort of widely recognized operate more effectively at, at scale and on a and on a regional footprint and, and something like transport is one of those where it's often argued it can operate more operate more effectively at um, at scale okay thank, thank you uh, matt um, yeah jamie yeah you want yeah, to come back yeah thanks matt um that to me um to me that just sounds as though um the problem that the current cardiff capital city region deal isn't addressing it's just being passed to another body to ignore uh, for me the whole idea of the cjc's is to basically take out certain functions that monmouthshire county council and other councils do so they can focus on that and improve on it and expand its reach otherwise what is the point because you might as well just leave it where it is and just not improve it um that's my that's the way I see it. Now that might be, um, I, d I don't know, um, the poor man's way of looking at things, I suppose. Mm. But that's how it seems to me. It seems as though the Welsh government is saying we're coming out with this uh, corporate body that can oversee and do things. And yet it's still ignoring its basic problems, which that needs addressing, really. And if we're going to agree to this and feedback to the Welsh government what they can do, then it needs to reach out to outlying communities that aren't being reached at the moment by various means and whatever, because our, my residents are being left behind. And there's other areas in Monmouthshire I know that are in the same boat. But with respect, I'm here representing over Mono. And if I want, if our residents want to get to Newport or Cardiff, we have to catch a bus every two hours. If you want us to leave our cars behind and use public transport. We have to wait two hours for a bus. And quite frankly, that is shocking. Mm. Absolutely shocking. Because if you miss an eight o'clock bus, you've got a 10 o'clock bus. Half the day's gone. Mm. You okay. know, and you, you can't do anything. And if a CJC can't address that, is, or is not for addressing that, what's the point? Mm. If we okay. can do it as good as good as now, why change it? There's just no point. OK, sorry. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Trahan. Um, I think getting sort of more, more slightly parochial then in a sense, yeah. but you know, fair point. Uh, does anybody else now from the PSB want to come back in before I move out, you know, to, to other hands that are up now from other members of the council? Yes, Chair, I just got one last question. I just need it's a quick one. It is to, to yeah, Matt. Councillor Howarth, come in. Or if Paul wants to step in, I don't really care. Um, Matt, if, and I've got to go back to, because it's all about cash, there's nothing else we're talking about. It, it's about, you know, I mean, I, I think the last speaker, he's made a very valid point there, like, you know, I mean, about, about, about it, because it all revolves around money. The £400 million pound that the uh, central government uh, would place uh, excluding that is excluding the farming subsidies etc that it will place on 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 the Welsh government it has promised the 400 million 370 I'll round it off to 400 million because I like rounding things off it makes it easier on percentages um, if if 
this body, and I call it a body, uh, the four bodies within Wales that the, uh, the Welsh Government are deciding to, to set up. If that money is um, not given to them, the Welsh Government put a block on it, i.e. they want to distribute that money in their, in their way, or is this the intention of having the top up for the monies that i.e. in brackets the city deal monies etc so this 400 million will be split between the four regions or or how they do that that you know, we don't really know but that's up to them to sort of is that what this is all about really more than anything because i can't see no logic and the last speaker just made it very clear there i can't see no more logic in in doing this than than chucking snowballs at the moon. I, I can't see what benefits we're, we're going to have out of, of Monmouthshire. So my, that is my question. Do we okay. believe Do we believe that the £400 million, pound, which is going to be divvied up between the four regions, they're going to distribute that money within the three brackets that they have? And I see Paul wants to come in. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, that, that is my question, because at the end, okay. this, is what, this is where it all goes down. It goes down to cash. There's no more cash by the city deal money, but there's a big wad of cash coming from Europe i.e. through Westminster, because they're going to give it us from now on. Okay. And I think that's okay. where this goes. No problem, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Howard. Paul, do you want to come in? Yeah, I'll try and deal with that. And then I've got just a small piece to offer on, on Councillor Roden's question as well, if it would be helpful, Chair. Um, the, the emergence of CJCs, um, they, they, they weren't designed um, as part of WG's legislation to be vehicles for share prosperity funding. Indeed, that's not what, as I understand it, Wales Government actually want to see. What Wales Government want to see is that the successor funding streams now that we're out of Europe come directly from UK Government to Wales Government, so Wales Government can largely determine how they are spent. UK Government may have a different perspective. Um, UK Government may be fonder of the idea of using a vehicle like the City Deal and if I could, Chair, I'll, I'll just make the point that I foresee that the Cardiff Capital Region City deal will morph into our CJC. These will not be two separate entities. We will continue to have one entity. Um, the, the funding point that Councillor Road and raised, we currently put, I can't remember the exact number, so I'll, I'll be roughly in the right ballpark. We're probably putting in about 100,000 quid a year at the minute to, to, to part fund the, the Cardiff Capital Region City deal. Um, we agreed that over a 20 year period as part of a council report. Um, so we're, we're already making a, a sizable financial contribution to regional working. And I would see that morphing from being a Cardiff Capital Region investment into a, a corporate joint committee investment that covers the same ground. So, so Councillor Howarth, um, it, it's a fluke of timing that these two issues come together. Um, just right now, um, and I would put it to you that Wales government and UK government have very different ambitions for the way that um, successor funding streams are going to be managed. Um, I foresee, who am I to say this, but um, I, I foresee that there'll be probably more money flowing directly from UK government through these CJCs than Wales government would necessarily wish to be the case. Um, therefore, um, if that's going to happen, I imagine we would want to exert some influence in terms of how it was spent, wouldn't we? Right. Um, but but my, my, my overriding point would be to remind you that, that as a council, when we responded to the consultation document, this council, and I'm paraphrasing hugely, basically said it didn't see the point to see JCs. It was an unnecessary additional level of hierarchy and we could do without them. Uh, we, we had enough vehicles already. So again, in terms of this debate, that's a point that you put. That's that's how you as a, as a council responded. That argument's lost. Um, now it's about how we make the best of what's going to be for Monmouthshire. Um, and it, it feels to me like one of those situations where if, if it's coming, we might, we might as well get in it and, tr and try and influence it as watch it from the side. Um, so I think the next fortnight will tell us the answer to your question, Councillor Howarth, in terms of how that money will flow. Um, but CJCs were not created as a vehicle for that money to flow through. It's just stuff and events and timing uh, uh, have led to a position where, whereby 
that may well be the case. Mm. OK, thank, thank you, you, Paul. Thank Thanks. You. Um, I'm going to go now to back to somebody still on the the, the um, PSB. We're going back to Dimitri Petrun, Councillor Petrun, Petruni now to, to finish off. You had one or two more questions, then we go to, to Councillor Alan Davis. Um, yeah, I'll be quick because Councillor Alan Davis hasn't had a say, but I think uh, the members of the PSB should be very clear um, that I know this is kind of a Welsh Government sort of um, proposal, but it says in the, in the Constitution, local government leaders and officers have been engaged throughout the development of the corporate joint committee proposals and these regulations and I and have welcomed their valued input. So local government leaders and presumably Councillor Fox have had a lot of say on this and I'm interested in what he's had to say about this. Um, from my perspective as a member of this committee, I am sceptical of any organisation that sets up its own um, scrutiny committees, determines its own budgets, uh, determines its own performance measures, um, has a lot of power that it sets itself and, at, and that being as minimum as seven. I don't think that's a democratic process. Um, it always uh, fills me with horror when I he see these sort of, I see it as kind of back slapping power grabs personally, and I, and I stick to those words. Um, so I think on the consultation itself um, and the principles, should it be treated as a member of the local f uh, government family chair? In my opinion, no, because the power uh, given to local governments is by the people. And the power given to this is by um, itself, by, a member, its own, by its own members and a government. They should not, it should be the people who set. So they should not be at level par mm -hmm. because the people give power, no, no one else. So I'm against that. And the ability for itself to set its own scrutiny functions, its own performance functions, and basically tell us what its delegated budget should be, should not be allowed. We should be absolutely categorically opposed to this as a council, and that's my view, Chair. Okay, th thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dim uh, Dimitri uh, Bedruni. Um, we now go on to Councillor Alan Davis, who's got his hand up. We're obviously, opening it out now to members of the council. Alan. All right, thank you, Chair. Um, I have to agree with some of the comments of uh, Councillor Petruni here because the three things I wrote on my sheet when I've been listening here is democracy, accountability and scrutiny. Uh, and I, uh, one of the questions I was going to put, I think Paul has partly answered it, I was very interested in this comment about the integration of the city deal management structure into this new structure. Uh, and as somebody who is the deputy on the scrutiny committee for the city deal, which I have to say in my personal opinion, that scrutiny has left a lot to be desired because of the purely because of the scale of the number of people. Uh, we, you know, we're not debating whether this organisation is going to happen. It is going to happen, but you know, like every order, there must be accountability and there must be scrutiny. Uh, and uh, you know, if we're talking about responses from our council, I think what we want, and certainly what the public would want, is to be sure that that accountability and scrutiny. scrutiny it is fit for purpose and that people can be confident that it is being scrutinised correctly. Uh, and to be honest, I'm not feeling that at the moment. So I think that's something as a council we really need to, to go back and say, well, look, we, we really need a strong uh, scrutiny and accountability uh, for this organisation. They are not a they, they, they are not democratically elected by anyone, uh, as I understand it. And therefore, it's even more important that we are able to scrutinise every decision that's made. Uh, and that we can debate those decisions as a council. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks, you. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Did, Matt, do you want to come back on that? So I don't think there's a huge amount to, to, to add to that, Chair. I mean, th I think there are very good points, well made, and there's certainly things which can be incorporated into to the response. Um, you know, if you think about Councillor Davis's points on uh, you know, the, the scrutiny that takes place of the, the the current sort of Cardiff Cardiff Capital region, uh, you know, I, I think we've had sort of separate conversations on, on that with with sort of Hazel our scrutiny manager, you know, Councillor Councillor Davis, and you know, some of those concerns have been been fed in, and certainly they're all points that need to be reflected on and, and learned from when the the scrutiny of the new corporate joint committee is is set up. Um, you know, the other thing, of course, just to to bear in mind, I think I said this this earlier on. Uh, although the CJC will have delegated powers, and as Paul have said, 
you know, to an extent, those are the powers which this council will have to choose to cede through its from its own constitution and changes to its constitution to give those powers to to the leader as the as the representative on the on the CJC. But but actually, the the leader um, can can still be held to account and, and asked to account for those decisions through through scrutiny and, and any sort of scrutiny arrangements within this council. So. You know, if you think about the changes we made to this committee last year, it was to broaden its remit from the Public Service Board Select Committee to Public Services Select Committee to look at and have sight of all of the different collaborative arrangements that this council is, is engaged in, recognising that sort of the changing external landscape meant we had an awful lot more things where our, where our eggs were effectively in sort of regional or, or collaborative baskets. And, and, and that's why we, this committee made a change to its its terms of um, of reference, um, and, and just to sort of go back, if I may, to and just sort of touch very briefly upon Councillor uh, Petruni's sort of earlier earlier point um, on involvement. I, I think you may get sort of differing views amongst the the family of councils as to the extent of of involvement and and how that compares to how it's sort of written in this this consultation document. One of the reasons we were keen to throw this open to, to all members rather than just the, the members of the Public Services Select Committee today was because I think you know, over the course of the last sort of eight or nine months, something which is an incredibly important topic probably hasn't had the sort of airtime and focus that any of us would have probably wanted or, or expected because of the focus of, of both councils and, and Welsh Government on, on coronavirus. So I think probably most people would recognise it's gone a little bit quiet and, and that's one of the reasons we wanted to open this this out today. OK, thank you, Matt. We go now to um, Councillor Louise Brown. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I think my my concerns are also about the demo democratic accountability of um, how this is going to operate. And um, I think really in terms of the scrutiny, I suppose, that's the best um, way in to try and see if anything can be done about that. I've had a very quick look at the bill and it's only a five minute look and it seems as if there's a bit of disparity here because quite a lot of the bill is about, um, you know, making um, local councils more accountable in terms of petitions and so forth. And then you've got this being set up which seems to be at the opposite end of the scale. But one of my concerns is also about the funding arrangements, because quickly looking at the bill, it seems as if um, it just says regulations will cover funding arrangements, whereas your slides suggest that principal, principal councils should actually contribute to this. Now, I don't know why they can't centrally <coughs> fund this, you know, in other words, from either uh, Welsh Government or the UK Government so that um, basically um, you know each region gets a, a similar sort of amount and then it's up to the 10 regions and then it doesn't individually affect the budgets of each particular council because obviously our council is always struggling with its budget and I don't don't really understand if there's going to be an overlap with the Cardiff City deal or if you know there's going to be similar officers for that and you know how the two will actually interlink but my main concern is about the budgetary side because obviously if the council is contributing to the budget but then it actually has very little say over it um i was quite interested to read the bills um bits about um obviously this covers three particular areas like transport and um the strategic development plan and also um, the economic side. But it also says that two regions could form their own um, sort of joint uh, committees on different functions, but then they would have to consult very widely with the public on this. And again, you know, it seems as if what, you know, there's different aspects of the bill that seem to be um, sort of uh, very much on the democratic side of uh, consulting local people about everything and then there's this this particular thing that doesn't seem to be on the other end 
of the okay. spectrum with a, la a lack of um, consultation, democratic accountability and consultation with people. And um, I mean, I'm particularly concerned about the strategic development plan because with the local development plan, it said on the slide it was going to have a light touch. Now, the LDP has a lot of consultation with local people. And then is this going to be all overridden by, <clears throat> you know, a very small number of people um, deciding on a regional basis what's going to happen in a local area? You know, that doesn't seem to match to me about accountability. The transport mm. side I'm also concerned about because, you know, our area doesn't seem to do particularly well in, in those terms. And I'd like to know what sort of contribution the council would be likely to make towards this body as well as the Cardiff City Regional Deal. OK, thank you, Councillor Brown. Mark, do you want to pick up a number of points there? Yes. Yeah. Do you want to make some general comments? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll make a start. If, if I if I miss anything, there was, there was quite a bit there and, and all good points. So, um, yeah, please sort of pick me up if I if I miss anything out. So so just to go back to your, your opening point, Councillor, Councillor Brown, you're absolutely right. The, the, the CJCs are one part and one small part of the, the local government and, and elections bill which, which came out yesterday. So obviously we're focusing in detail on the, the, the regulations, what, what are kind of called the establishment regula regulations for, for, for CJCs. I don't want to get sort of caught up too much into the, the technicalities of it. There will also be a second set of, of sort of regulations around a sort of general general application that will will follow. But, but putting that to one side, the local government elections bill has huge provisions in, in terms of uh, you know, opening up and and, and sort of making um, democracy more more accessible and accountable, and and probably the biggest single thing in that bill is, is sort of enfranchising, giving votes to to sixteen and and seventeen year olds in in Wales for 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 um, for elections within the the powers of, of of Welsh government. You know that that is a huge a huge change. The requirement to have petition schemes being being another one. So there's quite a bit within within that bill. And, you know, and, and I can understand there what you say in terms of actually it feels a, a little bit like then you are putting powers in the hands of a smaller number of, of representatives within within CJCs. And as, as Paul has sort of already covered in this, I think the, you know, this council has commented on, on that that previously. Um, the establishment of, of corporate joint committees and, and moving towards regionalisation in, in this way is a, is a policy direction which has been taken by, by Welsh Government and as officers that, you know, that that's not one for us to, 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 to comment on uh, but, but sort of Welsh Government have, have, have decided to go down to down this route. Mm -hmm. One of the things I think that, that sort of is on, is on record is that the, the WLGA, our, our representative body, well, well, sort of saying it's broadly support, you know, supportive and willing to work with, with councils on on CJCs. It is opposed to the to the way in which it's come about through mandation. You know, if you think of, of, of CJCs, corporate joint committees as another vehicle by which councils can collaborate and, and pool budgets and work on greater footprints, then, then many will argue there are advantages to, to that. The objections I think that, that have come from within the local government family have tended to be on the fact that the ability of Welsh ministers to mandate that councils will, will set up CJCs rather than leaving them to a vehicle which are within the gifts of councils to get together and decide that they that they wish to do. Um, so to sort of on the matter of, of, of sort of officers, you know, as, as Paul has mentioned, you know, we probably foresee a situation where the, the, the Cardiff Capital Region, the, the city deal, the, the team, they morph into the CJC. It already has a, a chief executive. It already has a, a number of staff. So, so the transition of that, that CJC into, the, into a corporate joint committee would be a lesser commitment than setting these, these CJCs up from, from scratch. I think the, the matter of, of why they haven't been funded, yeah, I think absolutely you know, those are things which, which could be incorporated into a, a consultation response. Ultimately, that's a matter for, for Welsh Government. But what I would also say is probably being slightly realistic about that. If they were to fund it from Welsh Government budgets, that would result in, in less Welsh Government budget elsewhere 
and and probably that would be less Welsh government budget going into local authorities. So if it wasn't you know for, for us to determine or for the CJC to set its own budget, it would be Welsh government top slicing that that budget and and passporting less through to to local authorities. So the, the the one thing the bill does give the, the power for the CJC to do is to set its own budget requirements. So it's not Welsh government saying you will spend a certain amount. It is the CJC and the, the the ten members of the CJC setting that um, setting that budget. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. We we'll move now then to um, Councillor Peter Fox, who's leader of the county council. Peter, would you like to come in? Yeah, uh, thank you, Chairman, and good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, I didn't meet the make the start of the meeting, but I had a had the pleasure of listening to quite a lot of the debate, which is is really interesting. Um, to be, be very clear right from the start, um, the, the, virtually all of the local government family were uh, against the principle of CJCs. And in uh, uh, Cardiff Capital Region especially, the 10 leaders were really frustrated about this being imposed or trying to be imposed on us because we'd actually voluntarily created the same vehicle basically through the Cardiff Capital Region, which has 10 leaders on it or with one vote uh, all operating under the delegated uh, um, powers that our individual councils gave us um, and we're doing actually we're operating pretty well as what they perceive a CJC would be like so um, we, we couldn't quite understand why this was being thrust on us if you go back why did CJCs come about well, not long ago, too long ago, some of you remember that the then minister, Alan Davis, was very, uh, very, Alan Davis, uh, yeah, just Alan, isn't it? Um, who was very clear on wanting to reorganise local government. And of course, there was a rebellion against that. And then there was a, a requirement for, lead, well, leaders voluntarily started meeting with our new minister, Julie James, to think about what the future could be. And if we were going to retain our own authorities, there needed to be a commitment to work far more regionally. And, uh, and we'd already embarked on that in, in, in many ways. But so the CJCs have flown from that discussion as an alternative, really, to sort of a deeper reorganisation. I'm disappointed that Wales government um, have wanted to thrust this on us because they talk of devolution all of the time, uh, but they only like to devolve to, the, uh, to, to the, their level. They don't really want to go... Uh, much uh, below that and and this mandating us requiring us to do things is absolutely as Dimitri says it's taking away the power from the people so actually Dimitri I'm absolutely with you on this I have been against uh, the the imposition of CJC's right from the start and um and there was a fair showdown last week, to be honest, between the Minister uh, Julie James and, local and the local government family, because in fairness to Julie James, she's been an excellent minister for local government. And, and she really did believe that there had been a lot of communication going on between officials and local authorities over the last several months. And she found that uh, when she met with us, that wasn't the case. So on Monday night this week, we did have a, a, a session with the minister to understand a little bit more about uh, things and to air some of our considerations and concerns. For instance, I've got the instruments for the South East Wales city region up on my screen now, which is on their consultation website, you know, and there's lots of stuff in there where it tells us how we're going to do things. And that's what was really griping us. It tells us who can do what and, and how it will be funded and, and various things like that. But in fairness, the minister has over recent months, um, from, certainly from the start of the discussion, has, has, has made several concessions in all of this where, where um, you know, because there was a fear that this was a way that Wales government wanted to infiltrate the regions, if you like, and take control of what we were doing already. And, and she's given way on that in, in, in many ways. So I, I think actually our Cardiff Capital Region and, and how, what we've developed with the Cardiff Capital, uh, with a joint cabinet, is almost a, um, a, a blueprint for how she wanted to see CJCs evolve and using this almost as a pattern and it works it works quite well 
in our corner, I suppose, uh, our city region, our, cap uh, our cabinet could morph very easily into a CJC. Now, that wouldn't be quite the same for some of the other regions who aren't quite so developed in, in, in perhaps uh, in, in, their, in their regional working uh, as, as we have, have been. But collectively, you know, uh, there still is a serious resistance about being mandated to. But as the minister told us, this is going to happen. And well, it has happened yesterday, but we have an opportunity now to look at the instruments and regulations and shape those in a way that is uh, uh, suitable and, and acceptable uh, to us. I've heard, uh, you know, um, I've heard things about the Shared Prosperity Fund this afternoon, and Paul captured that very well. There is a just, it's just coincidence these things are coming together, and I think it's highly likely that uh, CJCs or or the regional entities that are currently in place more likely will be the recipients of Shared Prosperity Fund, which is basically replacement EU uh, fun funding. Uh, and, and that is going to be contrary to perhaps what the Wales government want. But like Paul said, that, that's a, a debate still to be had. When I pick up some of J Jamie's points, which I absolutely under understand James, Jamie's points, because there is a general feeling that the, the Cardiff Capital Region has the overview of, uh, uh, or rather the decision making around every element of the city deal. Well, it doesn't, because £734 million pounds of that was, was pre-allocated to Wales Government to take forward Metro. And it's under Metro that these infrastructure, the transport infrastructural uh, main projects and through Transport for Wales, they, that's how they will be roll, rolled out. And we were always anxious that Metro is never really going to be contributing to some of areas like, like Monmouth uh, uh, and as, as uh, and, and other rural areas around the region, it's never. It always seemed to be that we were going to be missing out. And uh, I know in later phases, it's proposed that other models of, uh, of of integrated transport can be rolled out into places like Mon Monmouth, for instance. Rapid bus transit is is something. Professor Stuart Cole came and talked to me about about you know what could we do around uh, tra um, transport into the rural areas and you know what what sorts of things could happen and you know there is so there is thinking around that but I agree Jamie it's going to be a long time I think before we see some of that metro thinking rolled out um, and so the you know the, the the city the city region cabinet the city regional cabinet at the moment doesn't have a big say into what uh, the metro funding uh, will how and how that is distributed now that's a good question about so what extra responsibilities will a cjc have in its oversight of metro because metro has been overseen as i said by transport for wales under the wales government and you know so i don't think the cjc or indeed the capital cardiff capital region cabinet as it is at the moment uh, it is going to have a, a huge influence over those big um, uh, infrastructural uh, uh, pieces. So, um, but I'm hopeful in the future that later stages of uh, of um, uh, metro funding will see some difference there. Just um, on also on CGCs, probably covered earlier. It's proposed again just to mirror what we're doing in the in the Cardiff Capital Region. Ten leaders, uh, one vote, one authority to one authority. Um, that's 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 the the, the proposal um, uh, that is is still there. We currently um, fund as Monmouthshire six percent of the total local government element of city deal, whereas Cardiff plays about twenty three uh, percent uh, in. So it gives you some comparison, even though we still hold one vote one council so Monmouthshire out of from an influence perspective um does pretty well in in some of those uh, uh areas so um i think it, it it can all look a little bit confusing but i think from my perspective if we have to have cjc's and it looks like we will um our cardiff capital region joint cabinet arrangements will morph very easily into the cjc it will almost be i don't see that it'll even feel or look much different at, at all and um so i don't think there's too much to worry about there and when we start thinking about regional you know uh, talking about how it's been taken away from us don't forget we've already made commitments to regional working for many years um it was really important that we did that well, i think most of us believe that providing that that as long as we were held accountable 
for services, uh, it, it, it didn't really matter how they were delivered, providing they were delivered and uh, and they were done well and we could be held to account for them. So regional working is a fact of life in local government at the moment. If we were in England, uh, the alternatives to CJCs would probably be combined authorities, uh, but we haven't got that. So they're trying to formalise the so what might be seen as a sort of loose regional arrangements in some areas and formalising them into those CJCs. But as I said earlier, Chair, uh, our, our Cardiff Capital Region Joint Cabinet is almost what they're proposing. So it's, it's not a lot of difference and it will only deliver those prescribed areas that uh, are, are allowed. I oh, better go, somebody's at the door and the dog's barking. So <laughs> okay, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you Chair. Fox. Um, I move now then to Councillor Jane Pratt. Thank you very much, Chair, and thank you very much for the invitation to come along today, which is appreciated. It's been a fascinating discussion. And like many on the call, on the, on the meeting, I was very sceptical about CJCs when I first heard about them um, earlier this year, and I was very anti, but it's taken me three or four meetings to actually properly understand them and how they could there are positives here for us and you know our chief executive uh, mentioned some of them it is about funding and actually it's about regional decision making what i haven't appreciated since i've had this portfolio is transport for wales which is a non statutory body spending vast amounts of money on consultants who haven't got a clue what they're doing regarding transport ignoring our officers who are who are absolute experts on what goes on in our region and then coming back to them when they don't know what they're doing and asking them to sort it out so I see this as an opportunity because I see, as as uh, our leader has explained, it will be along, I believe, the same sort of guidelines as the Cardiff Capital City Region. I see the Regional Transport Authority being a subcommittee of that. And, I, you know, we've got some really exciting projects in our area, you know, like Mega Station, Mega Walkway, um, Seven Tunnel Junction, the Chepstow Project. And we have to go cap in hand to various different places to try and get the money to scrape it together to forward these projects. And, you know, I see this as a real opportunity of quicker decision making. Councillor Traherne is absolutely right. You know, we've had a lack of investment in Wales for 30 years. I'm not just talking about the Conservative government. You know, it goes back to the Labour government as well in train and buses in Wales. And we need to put that right. And, you know, I really hope that this will be an opportunity of seeing the funding coming through so that we can crack on and deal with our climate emergency and get on with these really important infrastructure projects. So, um, you know, whilst I was very, very suspicious about this, I'm now really coming round to the fact that this really could be an opportunity. So thank you very much for having the chance to put those views. Thank okay, you, Chair. Thank, thank, thank you, Councillor Pratt. We move now then to Councillor Roger Harris. Thank you, uh, Chair. Fascinating uh, discussion, um, all basically around uh, uh, democracy. And uh, we're talking about, as Paul said, it's, it's a done deal. We might as well be uh, in it. And the, uh, the, the people that are going to be part of this um, uh, set up are democratically uh, elected leaders of the respective uh, authorities. And it was fascinating to hear uh, Peter say, basically, uh, as far as he can see, what we're going to get is what we've already got. And he seems very happy with the uh, uh, the fact that he interacts well with the uh, other nine uh, uh, members of the uh, uh, capital uh, city region set up. So that bodes well for uh, uh, for what's going on. And, uh, you know, some of us are obviously uh, very anxious uh, about what might happen, but it doesn't seem uh, like, uh, as Peter has said, there, there is uh, 
uh, too much to uh, worry about. And as I say, democracy is a, is a, a, a funny thing. If you take it to the microcosm of um, uh, our council and what might happen locally, I'm a democratically uh, elected member and the honest bottom line is that uh, um, I really haven't got uh, any say if I'm not in agreement with uh, the, con the controlling group and that's the way uh, uh, democracy works. So I don't think there should be uh, any fear down the line uh, of things being any different to uh, um, the majority of us councillors that are already happening, uh, 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 as I say, already happening. So uh, let's think positive, let's go for it because we haven't got an alternative and, uh, you know, enhance, uh, enhance it uh, if we can uh, from a positive point of uh, view and uh, um, let's see where we go. OK, thank you, thank, you. thank you, Councillor Harris. Um, I think Councillor Paul Jordan, have you got a question? You've put something in the chat bar. Yes, uh, thanks, Chair. Um, to what extent um, could Monmouthshire exercise some of its own independent functions? For example, could Monmouthshire still have its own economic development function as we currently have in the Enterprise Directorate? Or would the entire function be transferred to a regional arrangement? Matt, do you want to come in? Yeah, yeah, thanks very much, Jim. Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, yeah, within the, the, the regulations as, as currently sort of drafted and, and gone forward for, 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 for consultation, we could retain parts of, of that function. So the, the CJC you know, will, will assume sort of responsibility for the, the strategic sort of economic development and, and local growth function. But if Monmouthshire County Council wanted to retain some, some functions locally, uh, the regulations would, would permit for, for that to be developed between the CJC and, and Monmouthshire County Council. And you could have some sort of concurrent operations with part of that function being delivered within the local authority and, and sort of the strategic responsibility sitting with um, with the CJC. So so the, the, the draft regs as currently put forward would, would permit that to, to, to happen. And, and you know, there is quite a bit of room um, and, and discretion within these for negotiation between the CJC and the, the local authority. Not every aspect of this is being mandated by, by Welsh Government. The, the principle and, and framework is, but with some of those individual functions, there's a lot which is still to be still to be determined. OK, thanks, Mike. Thanks, thanks Chair. Thanks and thank you, Matt, for, for your response. I see no further hands up in, in the chat bar. And, and unless anybody wants to come in now, I'm going to very briefly um, sum up. I mean, first and foremost, I, I do want to thank um, the Chief Executive, Paul Matthews and, and Matt and other officers for taking us through the presentation and actually clarifying today uh, in terms of the, the, the CJC. Um, I don't think there are any other questions uh, arising. Um, in, in terms of what I've Try to jot down, and I know that um, uh, is it just me, or or has he stopped working? No, he's frozen <laughs> in time. Frozen, definitely. No, he's frozen. <laughs> Who takes over in this instance? <laughs> Yeah. If you could just Good give question. us a couple of seconds and we'll try and get him back. I'm sure he was just saying double the salary of the chief executive. That was what he was saying. Thank you very much. I'll go now. Yes, Hazel, <laughs> Hazel can sum up instead. <laughs> I think he said quadruple. Sum up if you would like. Yeah, hey, Hazel, do you think it'd be, I think it's a good idea if you could sort of step in because it, it, it's possible you'll be back within 30 seconds, but but it might be sort of five or six, five or six minutes. And I'm very conscious we're still live streaming and, and we may have members of the public watching, uh, watching in as well. Okay. 
OK, I, th I think the chair was starting by saying that the CJC will cover principally strategic development planning. Um, we'll still have our local development plan and our local planning function is not affected. Um, regional transport, this is welcomed. The economic wellbeing function, only functions that will move into this uh, are those that will benefit from sitting in a regional arrangement anyway. And Francis pointed out that for scale and mass, that would be beneficial. Um, it was explained that the purpose today is not about whether we will or won't have CJCs, it's to submit our consultation response and for the select committees to shape it. I think some of the key points were around uh, this being seen as a creature of local government subject to the same powers and duties um, and that they, the CJCs could evolve differently in different areas. Um, also that it would be run by the 10 leaders of the councils with delegated powers. They don't need to report back to uh, that to get permissions from councils, but they would be subject to scrutiny. We spoke of creating subcommittees and uh, additional co-opted members. Um, we said the budget for the CJC would be met by the constituent councils. Time scales receives Royal Assent early next year, has to hold a first meeting by September next year. Um, and also we spoke in the introduction about resources and we discussed statutory roles and we were reassured that we're already ahead of the game in terms of staffing because our um, capital, uh, Cardiff Capital Region Director Kelly will become the lead of the CJC. We then had questions from the committee. Dimitri focused particularly around democratic concerns around the power of leaders and accountability. Um, we also spoke of concerns for the CJC determining their budget, the governance arrangements and the scrutiny arrangements, and that this would be paid for by local authority. So Dimitri's concerns were around checks and balances. Uh, Simon asked for clarity on how we got to this position, time skips going forward, and the value of the scrutiny today. Um, and clarity was given that the legislation has been passed, our contribution to towards the regulations that underpin it. Maureen made some questions around uh, transfer of responsibilities, who is responsible in the interim and the erosion of local authority powers. Um, Richard Roden, some clarity sought around the steep prosperity funding and the distribution of funding and Paul said that it was unclear at the moment but it could offer greater flexibility to CJCs around how monies are spent. Jamie uh, spoke of some concerns around the impact of city deals so far and the extent to which CJCs may have a greater impact extending their reach through collaborative delivery um, and he spoke of some areas feeling left behind. Simon uh, then raised the point about uh, CJC's delivering structural monies and Paul explained again that uh, the CJC's weren't designed to be the deliverers of the monies, it's, uh, it's timing and how these things have come together and that Welsh Government and potentially central government have different ideas over how these monies will be spent. Um, and we said that we fed into the initial consultation that we didn't see the value of CJCs, but we are where we are. The role is now to see how best we can influence this. Dimitri also then finished off with concerns about democratic mandate. And uh, we then moved on to questions from other members. Some of them love Councillor Alan Davis, concerns around scrutiny and accountability, and Ms. Brown, very similar. Um, also wanting clarity on the interfaces between C CJCs and other bodies. Um, the leader then spoke to sort of reassure us that the 10 leaders were largely initially opposed to CJCs as we were already operating in this way, but that this was um, sort of following on from discussions around reorganisation and this was the conclusion that this could be an alternative to reorganisation. He explained that what um, we most opposed was the imposition of CJCs taking powers from the people through mandation. Um, the leader explained there'd been very little communication from Welsh Government to local authorities um, and it was the tone of the instruction as to how we must operate that hadn't been so welcome. But that said, the Minister sees our region as a good example of how we can operate effectively and now it's a case of working out how best to influence them. Um, the hey, Hazel, sorry, 
just, just to interject, I'm not sure if you were the, the, the chair is now back in. I wasn't sure if you could see him on the uh, the screen. So, so chair and Hazel between you, I don't know whether you want to just continue and conclude that something up, um, chair, but Hazel, I wasn't sure if you could uh, see the chair was back. Yeah, uh, Hazel is doing a better job than I would have done probably. So I, I'm happy for her to finish. I just lost connection and apologies for that. Nothing to do with me. The connection just uh, went out, but please carry on Hazel. Okay. So the leader rounded off saying that it would be interesting to see if the CJC has additional powers over the Cardiff Capital Region on things such as the Metro and he explained the position around the Metro at the moment that funding is allocated directly for those projects. He also confirmed that the um, Cardiff Capital Region Board will morph into the CJC with very little disruption and he reassured members that this council has been committed to regional working over many years. Um, Councillor Pratt, um, she explained that she was initially sceptical, but she felt there were lots of positives for us in terms of funding and regional working and that this could be a good opportunity to seek funding for projects and obtain quicker decision making, particularly around transport and infrastructure. Um, Councillor Harris, he sort of said that the leader's comments had reassured him that um, this is not likely to radically change existing working arrangements. Had some concerns around democratic mandate, but he said, let's try and embrace this positively. Um, Councillor Jordan asked a question around the extent to which we could retain some of our functions like economic development and officers reassured him that there was some flexibility for that within the arrangements. I think that was all in terms of summing up chair. So if there's anything else you want to add, I'll I'll sign off. Yeah, OK, thanks. Um, I say apologies. Um, my connection just suddenly lost. I, I, I do live out in the country, but normally my connection is good. But thanks, uh, here's Lila, for that you know, very comprehensive uh, summing up. You know, the only thing I would say in, in general terms, it, obviously the concerns about power and, and, and the power of particularly of, of the 10 leaders, but in reality, um, the legislation has gone through and I think Paul Matthews, the CEO, explained that we can't change it. On the other hand, I do think we've we've got an important role and we've actually started the process today in terms of contributing to the regulation of this new uh, CJC um, system and so particularly in terms of funding and also in terms of the scrutiny of it. Uh, and, and accountability. So I think uh, we've had a very broad ranging discussion and all of this, as the scrutiny officer, his Lilith has just fed back, can go into um, the response that will go to uh, Welsh Government uh, on this, the setting up of this uh, new system. So thanks all for your contribution today. And again, once again, apologies for, for having been um, frozen out at, at that point. Um, we'll move on now then to uh, point six, which is uh, tackling poverty through partnerships. And, and is Jude Langdon going to take us through this? Yeah, Jude is coming on. Thanks. Thank you. Don't... And uh... thanks. Go on. Please carry on. Great. Thank you ever so much, and um, and thank you for the the opportunity to bring this forward in front of members today. Um, Members have been really clear that poverty is a is a priority for this organisation. Um, it's also in abundantly clear that it's a topic that we can't tackle in isolation, we can't tackle alone. Um, for that reason, we have a, a tackling poverty plan that's making its way through the democratic process within, within MCC, but it's also en route to the Public Service Board. And this session today is part of that tracking through, if you see what I mean, through to the BSB. Um, and what we're really looking for, I think, from members is that kind of early member endorsement approach um, and that's very much the point today I think really rather than the the detail of the action plan it's about that approach and about the, the importance of working with members and about sorry, working with partners and looking for members to to express that view uh, hopefully in advance of um, in advance of PSB. If it's okay I've got one or two slides just to um, sorry bear with me yeah, find window to show you. Here we go. Okay, hopefully members can see that. Yes, yes, it's coming through now, uh, Jude. Thanks. Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you. Um, so uh, not too much depth by PowerPoint, I assure you, but um, just to kind of capture a few key points, really. I think the the first thing to kind of draw members' attention to, you know, in addition to the the report you've already seen, 
um, is that sense that what we're speaking about from a PSB point of view isn't new, um, that there is an existing aspiration that the wellbeing plan expresses to reduce inequalities between communities and within communities in the county and to support and to protect vulnerable people. If there's one thing poverty does make you, it is vulnerable. Um, so whilst today isn't necessarily about the detail of the plan itself, I think it's quite relevant just to, to give you the, a sense of what it is we're taking to the Public Service Board, um, which is that shared purpose that we're trying to adopt both for our own organisation, but also across partnerships. Um, and just trying to give some definition to that, which is really this idea that we will work together, I like that partnership approach, um, to promote equitable prosperity, and that we will work to prevent our citizens experiencing poverty wherever possible, but that we also recognise that however hard we try, particularly in current circumstances, there will be points in people's lives at which they're going to experience financial hardship. And when this does occur, uh, we will come together provide that wraparound support that makes that experience as brief, as infrequent and as manageable as possible. So the aim is to help people to emerge in that experience with greater levels of resilience. And then within that, you know, poverty is so complex and so all encompassing, you know, it, there's a risk it can become everything and consequently can, you know, almost disappear. So we try to define um, a set of initial priorities that are flexible but may be subject to change certainly subject to constant review but this these are the things that we want to marshal our actions around so they are um, i hope fairly self-explanatory firstly around employability skills and employment support i think that's hopefully self-evident why that would be relevant to poverty and again particularly a priority right now children and young people um I would just share briefly was not originally going to be a priority i think we att originally attempted to step away from a, a kind of life course approach but what has become abundantly clear over the last several months and from working and talking to many partners is that um, a consequence of the, the pandemic is there seems to be a disproportionate impact upon children and young people right the way through from kind of impact on early childhood development as a result of the lockdown through to you know, different experiences of lockdown for children who were um, you know, not physically at school and the impact that might have on differences within free school meal and non-free school meal attainment right the way through up to kind of youth unemployment, youth homelessness. So all in all, it started to feel remiss not to include that. So that would be a key focus. Mental health, um, again, I suspect most of this is self-evident, but as clearly is, is escalating in terms of, of a, a priority area. And it's, you know, both, it's very circular mental health, isn't it? It's relationship with poverty. It is clearly both a cause of, and an effect from poverty. Um, fourthly, this is no particular priority order, by the way, I should be clear, um, tackling the effects of inequality. Um, this is really about trying to capture that particular Monmouthshire character of poverty and recognising that maybe some of the, the sort of off the shelf solutions, if you like, that you see um, brought up in lots of other areas don't necessarily work in quite the same way here because of this very dispersed nature of poverty we have. It's very much an area for development this but one I think we need to look at with a, a very particular focus and, and lens. And then finally um, crisis prevention which is basically all about just trying to get people to access the support that does exist at the earliest possible opportunity and supporting them to, to navigate that offer. Because I think another thing we've found from talking to partners is that, um, that we are seeing an awful lot of people who are new to the system and who are experiencing some of these issues for the first time and simply don't have the tools to know how to navigate that system and want to support them properly in doing that. Um, also then, you'll see alongside that are two um, themes that we wish to weave through all of this um, because they're, we had a bit of a discussion about whether they should sit as standalone themes but actually we felt they kind of they impact on everything else. So those are co-production which I'm interested to note that you've uh, that word got used earlier on in a rather different context and about um, about Welsh Government co-producing with local authorities and it's interesting how sometimes when you're on the receiving end of co-production doesn't feel very co-producing um, and that power relationship is really, really important. So this is about how we, as a set of organisations, work with our communities and that real commitment to sharing power, to um, 
acknowledging and making the best of all the skills and the assets that they have to, to bring them to the And then the other theme that needs to weave through everything is housing. Um, it was noted in an earlier select committee, not this one, that um, housing didn't come through as prominently as perhaps we would have liked it to. And I think there was actually fair comment. Um, we're going to some trouble now to make sure that that theme is, is drawn out in every other aspect, because clearly, you know, a stable, good quality home underpins everything else in terms of all the, everything else we're attempting to achieve here. So we're making sure that that, that features appropriately. Um, right, this is a really busy slide and I'm sort of apologetic about that, sort of not. Um, I think what it does show, this is our governance structure, our emerging governance structure that we're going to be asking the PSB to, to sign off and approve. Um, I think what you see here is that poverty is one of those issues that just defies all attempts to simplify it because actually it cuts across everything. But I think also what this slide, without going into every little detail of it, hopefully illustrates is why a joined up approach is absolutely essential because it's the situation is so complex, it's just impossible for any organisation to tackle it in isolation. So I won't say too much about this, except to say that I will draw out, because I hope this is, might be useful for this, set, this select committee specifically, um, some of the key structures through which we envisage delivering on this plan. So clearly PSB and Programme Board is crucial because they have an existing commitment to tackling inequality, to supporting the vulnerable. And so we will be looking for their endorsement, their support, direction, you know, accountability, that unblocking role that they can they can hold. The the box that had the red circle around it in many ways is a is the crucial body here. This is the poverty and inequality steering group. This is a partnership group. It's already up and running. Its membership were deliberately keeping reasonably fluid because we want it to be able to reflect whatever it is we're actually dealing with at the time. But that is the, the group that will drive through that plan, that will have that regular monitoring against progress. Um, the, we're now in the throes of setting up a set of thematic action groups, which again will be partnership in nature. They take forward each of those priorities. They are time limited, action focused. They're all about the doing. It's also really important to give a note to our community support networks, which um, members may have heard mentioned in other forums. These are these are not only about poverty. These are place based um, groups that are very much about tapping into and enabling social action and community led action. What we have found from our early forays into these is that they're really interested in poverty. Um, and actually, that's a great opportunity for us to work alongside our communities and our partners in getting real on the ground, often quite small scale, but nevertheless incredibly meaningful and impactful action. And then the last group is the, the Poverty and Inequality Network. Um, if any of members are on the Social Justice um, Advisory Group, you may have attended our first network meeting. We had um, I was really pleased, I think I had 49 people on the call in total. This is a mixture of people from across the whole county. It's organisations, agencies, some members, community members, essentially anyone who is passionate about tackling poverty. And the idea is to hold that once or two or three times a year to bring those people together, to f fire that enthusiasm, build connections, share ideas. And that so far seems to be going well. This is the last slide from me. Um, this is really just to give you some examples. It's not in any way exhaustive, this slide, more illustrative, just to give you a sense of why we need the PSB's buy-in to take this forward. Um, so along the left-hand column, you'll see each of the priority areas we've set out. And then you'll also see further along an example or a set of examples, the sort of activity that some of which is already going on, some of which are things we'd like to explore further that actually delivers against those um, those priorities and almost all of them involve partnership working. So with that in mind, what I will do, I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, it's really just to kind of conclude by saying that that's hopefully a flavour of what we're trying to do, but I hope it gives members a sense of why it is we need to be working with our social landlord partners, with the health board, with 
police, but equally, you know, our partnership involvement doesn't begin and end with public service board partners. You know, it involves community and charity sector, which you know, notionally might be represented by GABO, but you know, it's so broad for everything from mine through to Gateway Credit Union, through to you know, Christians Against Poverty, right down to you know, Bridges um, Volunteering Centre. But equally, you know, really granular, um, very small scale, local level community activity that makes all the difference in people's real lives. Um, so we're essentially just looking for an endorsement of that approach in advance of taking this through to the Public Service Board in December. That was everything from me. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thanks, Jim, for, for a, a very you know comprehensive uh, report there and, and and really clarifying issues and you know obviously every well everybody's living in challenging times but covid has had uh, a huge effect on people who don't have uh, the resources or the money or the, or the right housing to sort of buffer them against everything that's that's being thrown at them at the moment and people have lost jobs who didn't expect to lose their jobs uh, it's totally unexpected and across a range of of jobs and professions and and many people claiming benefit now who've never uh, been in that position uh, before and I, you know it, it it is a it, it is uh, we are in in serious times i think for people who are in in poverty but thank you very much for that dear Hanvar. we move uh, to first hand up, which is Councillor Petruni. Thanks, Chair. Sorry, it's extremely slow. I have absolutely yes. no idea why, uh, so I do apologise. Um, thank you um, <clears throat> for this report, uh, Jude. Um, you, uh, uh, you know my feelings on this. I'm. Um, I'm really pleased uh, that we are now finally asking our partners. Um, I think I put this down a year ago, but we're there. We're there, and I'm not complaining. We're there. Um, there's a couple of things. Uh, first thing is something clearing up. Something you could clear up for me. At one point in the documentation, it talks about the Tackling Poverty Action Group, and then you talk about a Tackling Poverty Steering Group. Are they different or are they the same thing? Because I'm confused and there's no there's no action group in the diagram as far as I can see. And if it's there, I'm sorry, I missed it. So just a, that's a, just a technical question. Um, the next technical question is, and I've bugged you about this before, is inequality. And in its, in its own right, it is a hugely big piece of work. Are you talking about race? Are you talking about income? Are you talking about wealth? Now, you might not want to pin it down, but I suggest for practical reasons we might wish to, because um, inequality in itself is huge. And in, you know, in my paper, I focus on income inequality. Um, not that other inequalities are as important, but you know what I mean? Money tends to help the world go around a little bit, especially if you haven't got any. Um, so you were kind of, provide uh, explanation for that. Um, your housing, and I, I'll reserve all the rest of my technical comments because I presume this is coming to strong communities at some point, so I'll give it more detail. I suppose the bigger question for me, you providing this paper for us now, is the PSB should be doing this already. Um, they, they are already mandated to do this under the wellbeing uh, action plan. They are meant to work together to tackle big, uh, big issues, one of which is poverty. And um, why are we going to ask them to do something they should already be doing? Um, is it because they haven't, are you telling us they haven't been doing it? Or were they always looking for us to take the lead on that? And lastly, the Poverty Network Group. I wasn't aware of that. Um, uh, just if you could keep me aware of that for next time, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Jill, would you like to come back in? Thank you, Chair, and thank you for the excellent questions. Um, if it's OK, I might take them in reverse order, if that's OK, um, just because it makes a little bit more sense to me. But um, the first one, just to pick off the Poverty Network Group, um, the the member involvement in that was a subject of a little bit of debate about for the first meeting, what should be the appropriate level of involvement. And the decision at that point was taken to go with the Social Justice Advisory Group members initially. It's a very fluid group. We're I wouldn't quite say making up as we go along. That sounds a little bit too flippant, but we're, it's certainly evolving and dynamic. 
and it's very much open to anyone with a, a passionate interest in that topic. So I'll absolutely keep members abreast of that. Um, in terms of the, the PSB's existing activity, I wouldn't for a second wish to give the impression that the PSB's or its members are not doing anything to look at poverty. That's not the intent or the, um, the impression I'd wish to leave people with. I think I'd probably draw a parallel with our own organisation, actually, which is that um, if we were to go back uh, I don't know, two years, let's say, um, there is a huge amount of activity within our own organisation, the effect of which is to address poverty, um, to address its causes and its effects but perhaps we're not necessarily being drawn together under that banner. And I think the same is to some extent true of the Public Service Board in that there is, again, absolutely no shortage of activity. But I think what we're hoping to do with this piece is to really put some flesh on the bones of that aspiration which the Public Service Board has set itself. And hopefully by providing a, a greater degree of coordination across those groups can hopefully harness some more of that activity to become sort of more of the sum of its parts, I suppose. Um, the inequality question, um, again, you're right, we have discussed this before, and I think my answer previously I it was that loosely, primarily, we're talking about income inequality, and I would agree with that. Um, however, what we will be looking to do in terms of um, near future actions is to set up a, an action focused working group around that around that theme specifically and I don't want to prejudge what that wider group comes out with and I think the, yeah, the point of coming to members today was to talk about the importance of working in partnership and actually I really want to tap into that wider partnership view around that because I think that's possibly a, puts us on a stronger footing going forward. Um, and then finally, the Tackling Poverty Action Group, apologies, that's just a typo. It's actually when I was reading back through the report, having already published it, I realised I'd made an error in there. So um, no, that's actually, it is the Tackling Poverty Steering Group. Sorry for that. Okay, thanks for that. Um, and thanks, Councillor Batruni, for the for the questions and, and June for, for the answers. Go on now then to Councillor Jamie Trahan. Jamie. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Jude, for um, for your report and your presentation today. Um, can we, as a select committee, ask the partners, each partner, to feed back to us, say, every six or 12 months on their progress they've made towards tackling poverty, what steps they've been taking, um, and what results they've had? Um, would that be helpful at all? Thank you. Um, I I would suspect that, and I'm I'm conscious that Sharon Lloyd's on the call, so she may or map indeed might also has have, might also have a view on this. Um, I think you no, know, typically when um, uh, a topic is the subject of partnership activity, we you know it we it is in the spirit of of, of partnership working to report on that as a partnership, if you see what I mean. And then within that, you would you know. Uh, or to, you know, absolutely have specific actions that you might attribute to individual partners to see the contribution they have made to that. So I would like to think that actually if this is something that the Public Services Scrutiny uh, Committee is interested in, then you know we'd be very happy to continue to report on that. And I think that would come through as a, here is our partnership activity that has supported the delivery of the Tackling Poverty Plan. And then within that, I think it should be quite clear um, you know, where those different actions have, take, have been taken and you know the different contributions that different partners have made. I don't know if Matt's got anything else to add to that. Oh. Matt, do you want to come in? Yeah, yeah. thanks Chair. I, I think really probably Jude has, has nailed it, just echo what Jude said. This committee uh, in its previous iterations, the Public Service Board Select Committee has brought partners in, you know, be it uh, an Iron Bevan Health Board, be it, be it Natural Resources Wales, to, to be held accountable for their contributions to PSB commitments. And that would be absolutely true of this as well. You know, the, the paper that Jude is taking into the, the PSB in, in December will, will sort of recommit and, and almost, um, you, know, you know, put a sort of fresh take on the work that is being done by the PSB and its partners on, on poverty. And previously, this, this committee has, has looked at some of the other priorities you know, I, see, I think we will start to see in the coming months a refocusing of PSB. The PSB has, has already asked its partners to go away and look at a fresh at its commitments to climate emergency. 
and I think we would probably expect to see, particularly in light of, of what we have experienced over the last few few months in terms of you know, as a society, I would expect to see something similar in terms of, of sort of activity around poverty. OK, thanks, Matt. OK, okay. Thank, and thank you, Councillor Trahan. Any other comments from the offices before we move on? No. Uh, Sorry. Yes, by all means. Sorry, could I just add to that as well, just to reiterate and to, to reinforce what Matt and Jude have already said, that we're also looking at this through the lens of where other regional structures play a role in this that are not necessarily coordinated by Monmouthshire Council, but where we do have an interest in that at a regional level and the impact impacts of that work at a regional level actually play out in our localities. So I think that work will become more crucial as we start to move forward through Jude's plan, through the partnership working and where some of this sits within our direct control within Monmouthshire as a locality, but where we also have those regional structures that will also have an influence over some of this activity locally for us. Thank you. Okay, okay Thank thanks. You. We move now then to question from Councillor Maureen Powell. Can you hear me? Because my Yes, we can hear you, Maureen. Thank you very much. I may have missed a little bit because I lost my signal and had to re get back on again. So I hope I haven't missed, missed something that I'm going to speak about now. Um, and with the pandemic now, there are going to be an awful lot of people who haven't been in poverty till now, but because of having lost their jobs or not being able to be furloughed for any reason, because there are people who have missed out on that, and particularly self-employed people, there's going to be more poverty. And there's going to be more people that are dropping below the bread line. Have you seen um, a lot of this as yet, or is it this is something that's going to happen? Um, if I may, Chair, I think that we obviously work, really, this whole point of a partnership, we work very closely with our partners and we've all kind of share information around this about what we're all seeing. Uh, I think there is a sense that it is starting to come through now um, mm. in terms of you know increased universal credit claims um, our you know partners in citizens advice will tell you that almost not almost all but many you know very increased number of their inquiries now are about employment related issues um, we yes we absolutely are seeing more come through i don't think it's yet quite in the form of that tidal wave that we've been fearing that's mm. not to say it won't come um, i think one of the so far, one of the more reassuring things has been that um, for the most part, those systems that are there to pick people up are working. And that, um, you know, so for instance, there's some uh, data come up very recently, you'll have seen around food bank use. Um, and whilst we have seen an increase in very recent months in food bank use in, in Monmouthshire, it hasn't been not huge let's put it that way it's not it's not been a very large increase and we've had we work very close to the food banks and we've had that conversation with them about why they think that might be and the general sense is one of people are finding their way to the services that are, are there to support them um, and that has been and will continue to be i think the immediate future a really key focus is about as councillor thomas said there's a lot of people will be facing these challenges for the first time ever and the key focus has been around trying to help people get to that support at the earliest possible opportunity. And um, as an example of that, a key piece of work we've done through the steering group actually is um, we've created a new resource on our website that tries to aggregate into a single place all the different sources of support somebody might need, whether that's advice around debt or homelessness or um, you know a whole range of, of possible routes. Um, and we've worked very closely to do that and to promote that and to use that as a set of partners. And that is very much the focus at the moment. So to answer your question, it is coming through. It's, you know, a lot of it's anecdotal because there's always a lag in the data. Mm -hmm. um, but so far, the system seems to be largely bearing up. Good, because I'm thinking a lot of people who've um, got a mortgage, who uh, 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 they can manage to, to feed themselves by doing odd jobs and things like that. But, and the mortgage companies will give them a little bit of a holiday, but you know how long that will last um, to me is is a struggle. And I, I really feel for those sort of people. As I feel for everybody who's in poverty, but I think that's almost worse because it's like a, a load on their head, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's a very difficult time for a lot of people. Mm. Thank you very much anyway. 
Okay, I, I don't see any further hands up. Again, Joe, thank you for all your work with this. And and you know, I, I joined the um, the meeting that you had virtually a few weeks ago. Um, and it is a, a very important uh, piece of work. And I, I can, I'm sure, I, um, the rest of the committee will will join me in endorsing this, and that it goes forward. Uh, obviously, welcome the questions that um, Councillor Batruni brought up about uh, the whole issue of inequality and how difficult it is to define uh, and to actually define poverty, isn't it, in terms of relative poverty. You know, somebody who's in poverty in the UK might be seen as being well off in a developing country. It, 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 it's, it's a very difficult uh, issue. Um, and we obviously welcome the question um, that um, Jamie, Councillor Jamie Trahan brought forward about having feedback uh, sessions from uh, the partner organisations. Um, so, you know, I, I obviously welcome that. And I look, I live in, Ab well, just outside Abergavenny, and I look at uh, the various organisations like ACE, the, the Abergavenny Community Enterprise, the, the community centre, um, Gateway Church have, have provided something like 10,000 meals over the last couple of months with a lot of contributions from local traders and business people and that, ha that has really helped people and I, I think we need to you know to actually now delve down uh, particularly in, in Covid there's bound to have been an increase and, and in reality if we're honest about it some people who are uh, salary paid who, are, who haven't lost their wages or salary uh, over the last few months, they're probably better off because they're working from home. They're not using as much fuel. They're not going out much. They're not having the coffees, etc. Um, and so they, they, they're probably thinking, well, you know, what can I do with this money when when COVID goes away? But other people who've lost their work, and I think of Abergavenny Market and probably other uh, people like that who haven't been able to furlough, they have been in extreme. Uh, difficulties and, and particularly for those with children and, and in my other role as, as vice chair of, of corporate parenting in talking about care leavers yesterday who live on a on, on a knife edge financially and, and lots of them on zero hour contracts haven't been uh, eligible for furlough you know this this probably has pushed them right to the edge if, if, if not over so you know I welcome your work I applaud it but really, we, we, you know, as a PSB, we've got a huge responsibility now to take this forward and not just talk about it, but actually do it, <laughs> you know, and, and that, that is quite difficult. So, you know, thanks for all your input today and, and for your report and, and we very much applaud it and, and let's push this forward now uh, all the way in, in, in effect. So thank you very much. Thanks everybody for the contributions there. In terms of the minutes, I'm, I'm, unless somebody is going to uh, challenge, pick up any issues on that, I, I take it that the minutes are a true reflection of, of what happened at the November meeting. No one dissenting on that. Chair, uh, Chair, sorry, yeah. uh, it's uh, Richard Roden. I, I'll have to abstain because I didn't uh, attend the meeting, OK? OK, thank you, Richard. Um, but in terms of the next meeting, well, I, I hear no dissension. Uh, in terms of the next meeting, the date is is to be confirmed. Uh, I thank you all today uh, for attending and some of the people who've had to leave, unfortunately, go to other meetings. It's, it's been, I think, an extremely informative, helpful meeting. Uh, it might have allayed some of the fears, obviously, as, as we, we looked at the first um, item five with, with the setting up of, of, of the new committee system. Um, but some excellent discussion and, and inputs from the officers. So thank you for that. Thank you all for the uh, for attending uh, the meeting. Dear I hope, hope you, you, I was going to say have a safe journey, but you're all at home. You can switch off <laughs> <laughs> um, and have a have a good evening. But thank you for your inputs today. We we'll end. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you very Cheers. much. Thank, thank you. you. Do that. Really good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.